go ahead and call to order the Thursday, July 11, 2019 meeting of the City of Royal Oak Zoning Board of Appeals. The board does not write the zoning ordinance, but does have the authority to grant relief from it where practical difficulty or unnecessary hardship would result. The board will vote on each agenda item following a public hearing. Use, variance, requests require a minimum of, of six affirmative votes in order to in order to grant the requested variances. Non-use variance requests re require a minimum of five affirmative votes in order to grant the variances. If you would like to request that the board table or adjourn your case due to the absence of a full board, which is not the case this evening, please inform the chairperson immediately after the public hearing. Petitioners shall do their best to limit their presentations to 10 minutes. Each participant in the public hearing shall do their best to limit their comments to three minutes which moves us along to our first item of business, which is the approval of the minutes from the June, ter June 13th meeting. Motion to approve. We have a motion. Support. We have a second. Corrections, additions, deletions. Mizuka, did I see no. that? Okay. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. Moving right along to our first item of old business, case C1, Case number 190514, public hearing of the appeal of Michael Lemansky, petitioner and owner for the following variances. A, alter, expanding non-conforming structure. B, waive 2.2 feet of the minimum required south side yard setback of 8 feet to permit construction of a rear addition to an existing non-conforming single-family dwelling located at 1203 North Blair. Mr. Murphy. This is a case that's been tabled uh, two months now. So they're back uh, with their request and there's a representative tonight to further uh, provide further information on their request. But uh, I'll go back through the uh, findings from, from the case and you can uh, decide whether you would like to hold, open the public hearing again since there was a public hearing held and closed uh, at the May meeting. But there is a one and a half story home which is located on the corner of North Blair and Derby it's illustrated on the aerial photograph that's provided on the screen in front of you. The petitioner is uh, has a single family dwelling with a with a setback of less than the required eight foot on the uh, uh, to the dirt to the property line along Derby. The setback is only uh, 5.8 feet, and again, the re minimum required is eight feet. The petitioner is proposing to do an addition that's in line with the sidewall of the home, and it the addition would retain that existing non-conforming setback of 5.8 feet. It would not bring this, the addition of the structure into compliance with the minimum required eight-foot setback. If the structure, if the addition to the structure was, we'll say, bumped into eight feet, they would not be here today. There would be no variance request needed. But they are proposing to keep that addition in line with the existing home, and that's reflected on the drawings that you have in front of you. And in doing so, they're expanding what is a non-conforming structure in a non-conforming manner, and they require a variance in order to do so. Any questions for staff at this point? Not seeing any, is the petitioner present? Please come forward. Hi, I'm Carolyn Chikachi. I'm the designer for C2 Design, and I'm here to represent Michael Lemansky. He can't be here tonight, so I'm just here for any questions. I had submitted a little bit of a kind of an explanation with a diagram, and I had forwarded that by an email. Basically, kind of just showing that the neighbors approve uh, why we can't, it'd be difficult, and why we're asking for the variance. And just if you had any questions, but basically, with the design of the house and what we wanted to do, kind of jogging it in that two feet for two and a half feet didn't make a lot of sense. We're not going to go up two stories. The owner doesn't want a big, huge house. He just wants a ranch and he wants to expand his kitchen. And in order to open up from the front living room, that kind of stairway that heads downstairs, and then to continue on to a nicer, more expanded kitchen, like most people desire these days, it doesn't lend itself very well to kind of jog in two feet when you have the side door and the stair going down and it impedes on the kitchen space was kind of the main issue. And we're not expanding outside of that setback. It's an existing structure that there's not a lot we could do, and it seems like it's plenty of room. We're not ex exceeding lot coverage in any way uh, or any other variance, so this is... This is why we're here and hoping to <laughs> at least just continue that extension on. And those are the elevations. So you've seen those. 
there's a couple homes in the neighborhood that already have this existing situation and are much larger. And then there's a lot of other ones on our street that are all new. And um, I live also on the same street, so <laughs> that's why I'm saying that. Um, are much larger, exceed lot coverage, have lots of other setbacks and things that they've already gone through. So we're just here to see if this is going to be something we can do. Okay. Does anybody on the board have any questions? Yes, sir. Did you at all try to design in such a way that did meet the setback, since you could have appears to go more to the west? I did. I did. I looked at a few, a few different options. Honestly, the first thing we tried to do was just to go up, because his desire was to have a master suite upstairs and um, a laundry room and kind of uh, do all that. But in order to do that, there's no <coughs> this particular bungalow doesn't have a stairwell that goes upstairs. So the roof and the existing floor structure is just two by sixes, and they would never hold it. So we would have to tear it all off, put on all new floor joists, create a stair that goes upstairs, and then you're still not expanding that kitchen of that original footprint where that line is. So the kitchen would remain the same size. And you'd have to have a lot more structure and bids were coming in at $300,000. And that is far exceeds any desire that he has or wants to do with this house. He's been there 10 years and he just doesn't want all that. It's just him. There is, there's, uh, there are possibilities. It would take an island out of the kitchen. It would line it up kind of more similar to a galley if you kind of do that. It would, it would have to turn. It's just not as appealing to the layout and the flow of the space. I mean, it, it's not impossible, but seeing as how we're kind of in line with the wall already that's existing, it just made sense to continue on back for that reason. Any other questions? All right, not seeing any, I'm going to ask you to take a seat real quickly just so I can open up the public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to address the ZBA on this matter? Not seeing anybody, I will go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to this side of the table. Anybody? Mr. Kroll? Uh, yes, uh, I, I will make a motion to approve. We have a motion? I'll support. And we have a second, Mr. Kroll? I, I'm in agreement with uh, their architect that, uh, in fact, that that's, the design is going to make it going to enhance the neighborhood. Um, I, I think you could play around, but I agree. I, I don't think it would be as as uh, nice looking. So, I uh, I think two point two feet is is reasonable. Mr. Clyde, I just want to thank the applicant for submitting the follow up information that helped address my initial questions about neighbor support, and it also provided some rationale for your design. So, thank you. Anybody else? All right, that's seeing anybody. I will go ahead and call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? You're all set. Motion passes. Um, we can be in contact with you tomorrow, and then you can submit for building permits. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving right along to our new business agenda, item D1, which is case number. You want to jump that one up? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to. Yep, I am going to uh, interject and say that we did have an item that was postponed from last month, and that was case number 190619, the request at 708 North Campbell. And there was a, an elaborate discussion with the petitioner uh, mm -hmm. based on the petitioner's <coughs> comments. The board was kind enough to postpone the item. The petitioner did provide us with a modified land division survey which uh, necessitated a new variance request and you'll see that under new business the petitioner did submit a written request to us to withdraw the postponed case because they've submitted a new application which you'll hear under new business new business right, and i'm going to go ahead and switch up the batting order here and we'll move along to item d7 first which is case number 190727 public hearing on the appeal of yuri logvin petitioner and owner for the following variances a wave 494 square feet of the minimum required 6,000 square feet lot area for parcel A. B to wave 898 square feet of the minimum required 6,000 square foot lot area for parcel B. And C wave two feet of the minimum required 50 foot lot width for parcel B to permit a land division at 708 North Campbell. Mr. Murphy. If you recall the previous uh, case that the petitioner had presented last petitioner was seeking the opportunity to retain the existing home on the site and divide the property into two, uh, which necessitated 
in order for them to meet the minimum side yard setback for the home, they were placing the new lot line in a particular location, and they needed uh, variances from the lot, to lot area and lot width as well. Petitioner did demonstrate to you that they no longer want to keep the home, so they're seeking a new variance request, which a, uh, a new land division proposal, which is reflected on the screen. They're seeking to demolish the home, all the structures on the site, and divide the property into two build vacant buildable lots. Uh, as you may or may not recall, it's not a perfectly rectangular piece of property. And the peculiarity for us in determining whether it meets the minimum width requirements is to refer to the or zoning ordinance provision which defines how we measure a lot width. For a perfectly rectangular lot, you can measure the distance, we'll, uh, we'll say, uh, parallel with the front lot line and adjacent to the sidewalk. But as, as you can see, this particular uh, lot narrows as it gets, uh, moves to the rear. And we measure the lot width at the required setback for the home. Therefore, we're measuring the lot width at this particular point. And at that point, each of the lots measures slightly over 48 feet in width. For a new lot on this block requires a minimum lot width of 50. We did do the analysis to see whether the majority of the lots were smaller than 50, and they're not. So in this particular instance, it defaults to the standard minimum lot width of 50, which the petitioner is unable to meet coming in at about 48 feet. So they're seeking a variance for both lots in that aspect, as well as the default standard that the minimum uh, lot sizes need to be 6,000 square feet in area. And uh, each falls short um, one lot in terms of being shy by 494 square feet, and the other lot in 898 square feet. So they're seeking the variance for each lot from the width as well as the minimum depth. Any questions for Mr. Murphy? All right, not seeing any. Is the petitioner present? Hello, sir. My name is Yuri Logman. So I'm the petitioner and the owner for the property. Um, pretty much what you guys said was correct, yes. I um, was looking to originally to keep the existing structure, but it is unsafe and has to be demolished in order to rebuild. And um, unfortunately, the lot is not square, so it is, um, you know, an issue with splitting the lot. So that's why I'm looking for the variances uh, to split the lot and um, construct the two new um, single-family homes. Any questions for the petitioner at this point? Yes, ma'am. Have you ever considered a ranch on the entire piece of property? Um, yes, but at this point, um, uh, it's, it's probably not financial, you know, it is, it is going to be a financial hardship for me at this point to do the, the one lot, uh, you know, one, one building in there. Any other questions? All right, not seeing any, I'm going to ask you to take a seat real quickly, if you would, sir, so I can open up the public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to address the board on this issue? All right, not seeing anybody, I will go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to the side of the table. Somebody? Okay. Mazukin? <laughs> um, I'd make a motion to um, allow the zoning variance. I think the fact, I. Financial hardship is not a reason, but the fact that the lot is angled, um, the two front lines are actually. Well, actually, 50. before you go into any more explanation, do I have a I second? Support. Thank you. Please Sorry. continue. Um, the the two front lot, the from the street, from the front, they're both 50 feet. Um, even though it doesn't comply technically, I think it fits within the area. It's on Campbell. Um, He's resubmitted. He's done what we asked. I don't. I don't see a problem with this split. Mr. Curtis. Yeah, it's my thinking. Pretty much the same. It's a hundred. It's a hundred feet on the frontage. Right. Um, the fact that it angles back and is not a hundred feet in the back creates a problem. And so um, it's too bad it couldn't save the existing home, but it makes perfect sense to give this variance, split it, and allow in that setting too. Mr. Hurl. 
Yeah, I, I'm in. I'm in agreement with that. I, we don't see odd lot shapes very often up here, and it, it certainly is one of the, the uh, criteria to grant a, har uh, a hardship for. Um, I think uh, it, with the 50 feet and 50 feet up front, that's really what you're going to see. I think there's going to be very little effect to the neighborhood or, or to their house for uh, to go shorter than that. Any other comments? Yes, sir. I'm torn on this because it's not a financial hardship. However, I do recognize the fact that um, in order to do something with that property, which he owns now but it's not allowed to use, he's got to build new. Whether it's two houses or one, that's a different story. And the fact it's not his fault that the back, well, it's his property, but he's got an odd-shaped lot. Um, so that is a unique circumstance. Um, but this hardship is created by himself wanting to do two houses off there so he can pay for the new house versus just doing one new house. So... Well, I'll be in support of this motion. I, I, I think the other people in favor have pretty much summed it up. I mean, we're dealing with two 50-foot lots at the curb front. As you're looking toward the back of the of the property, obviously there's no dotted line showing that it's diagonal. I mean, from a visual perspective, you'd never know the difference. So I, I have no issue supporting this. Any other comments? All right, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? You're all set. Motion passes. Okay. Let's go backwards here. Give me one second. All right. Back to item D1, which is case number 190721. Public hearing on the appeal of Stephen R. Etsy, petitioner and Martin-11 LLC owner for the following variants. Wave 13 of the minimum required 59 off-street parking spaces to permit conversion of an existing building to medical <coughs> offices located at 309 East 11 Mile Road. Mr. Murphy. The subject property is located at the corner of East 11 Mile Road and North Troy Street, it was previously used uh, by Superior Fish as a food processing and uh, warehouse center. They had some ancillary retail sales and professional office. Uh, prior to that, it was actually used as a uh, bus repair facility, if anybody mm -hmm. remembers that. The petitioner is proposing to change the use of the property and to convert the building into two medical tenant spaces, as you can see reflected on the floor plan. They didn't provide a precise floor plan, they don't have one at this point in time. Under the ordinance requirements, uh, we review the gross floor area and determine the usable floor area for parking calculation purposes at 80% of the gross floor area. And based on that number, they're required to have 59 off-street parking spaces for the proposed medical use. The previous use only required 27 parking spaces. The petitioner is proposing to modify or restripe the parking lot to the rear and do some minor modifications to it that would result in 46 off-street parking spaces. Again, they're required to have 59, so they're seeking a waiver of 13 spaces. They provided the floor plans, some renderings of what the modifications to the structure will look like after the project is completed, and a site plan. I will note that in the report, and I'll reference it on the screen in front of you for a point of comparison, we included in the report a table which indicates the required amount of parking for different types of uses that might reoccupy that building. And you'll see those that are shown on the top at the top of the chart are those that require we'll say less parking, and those that are more intense that require more parking are at the bottom. So the petitioner is looking to establish, again, medical offices, which require one parking space for 225 square feet, which uh, is a, a hair more intense, if you will, than general retail sales. But it's in keeping with a fitness center um, 
it's slightly less than what would be required for a carryout restaurant or a convenience store, and certainly less than what would be required for a standard sit-down or dine-in restaurant. If you have any questions, we can try and answer them. And the petitioner did provide some supplemental documentation uh, that might be useful to, to you as well. Any questions for Mr. Murphy? Yes, sir. Yeah, Joe, so, um, this is not part of the downtown area? It is not located within the central business district, and they, um, they're located across the street. Uh, the so we don't really take into consideration the 700 parking garage across the street? We or the one around the corner? Correct. Under the ordinance requirements, we do not because uh, per the zoning ordinance standard, if this bill, if this use was located within the central business zoning district or at the south side of the street, uh, if, the, if the farmer's market wasn't there and there was an office building and they were going to locate there, they wouldn't be required to provide any on-site parking because they would be located within the DDA's boundary and they would be paying that extra millage to pick up the tab, so to speak, for the, for the city to provide parking and surface lots and structures but since they're not located and they don't uh, make that contribution the onus the onus is on them to provide their own on-street parking yes sir mr murphy yes, uh, parking. am i correct in assuming that had they provided a drawing showing toilet room storage that would have probably reduced the number of parking spaces required We would eliminate things like restrooms, mechanical rooms, some storage rooms. Uh, the total square footage of that is unknown, and that's why we apply that 80% calculation to say, in most instances, when we do that calculation, it comes out to be about 20% reduction in the total floor plan. So that's why we say, if there's no exact floor plan, we take 80%, because mm -hmm. that's, generally speaking, very accurate. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, not seeing any. Is the petitioner present? Yes. Yes, sir. Good evening, Chair, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals. My name is Stephen Esty. I have with me here tonight Nancy Standish from Giffels Webster, who prepared the drawings for you, as well as a principal uh, from the applicant uh, here tonight to answer any questions that you might have that I can't answer. Um, as was pointed out, this is the repurposing of, uh, of an existing building. The actual footprint of the building is not being changed, but the prior use as a superior fish uh, distribution center and small market, uh, and, then, and then the bus operation before that are not real viable uses for this uh, facility currently. So what's being proposed is a medical facility, um, a medical office specifically. There's one lease currently in place for approximately 5,000 square feet in the building uh, with Beaumont. Um, and we don't know who the other users are yet. So um, given the current situation with regard to parking under your ordinance, um, we, we've done what we can with the existing site to take the, the 27 spaces, to restripe them, to bring them up to 46. But it still puts us in a position where we're deficient on the parking overall. And it is important for patrons of these types of establishments to be able to get onto the site and to park and to get into the medical offices um, quickly. Um, I, I would note that the usable space calculation is at 11,772 feet. If that's divided by the 200 for medical office, uh, it, it results in 59 required spaces. Um, if it's divided by the 225, which is just general office, um, it's 52. And of course, in that instance, uh, it would only require a variance of six, approximately six spaces. But we're seeking the full 13 tonight because that's what's necessary under the, under the current application before you. Um, the one thing that we did point out in our papers, and I know we submitted um, our application to you with a narrative as to how we met all the requirements, but one thing I want to point out is um, if this, is, this request is really also consistent with the master plan. Um, the master plan makes a statement that the Zoning Board of Appeals continues to see several variances uh, each year to waive minimum parking requirements. During most cases, the board questions whether the parking standards in the zoning ordinance are excessive and if there are simply too few properties within Royal Oak that can actually meet them. Uh, it may be necessary to review the minimum amount, amounts of off-street parking required in the zoning ordinance to see if any of these standards should be reduced. Most commercial office and industrial sites in Royal Oak have difficulty meeting these standards, especially <coughs> along the Woodward Avenue corridor. 
And then it goes on to point out a, an Ann Arbor study which found similar issues in that city. Um, so I think to the extent you're seeing these types of requests, that's probably one reason. Um, but this is a very small request of only 13 spaces. Um, and this is really the best uh, way to repurpose this site. So we're seeking a variance tonight of 13 spaces from the required 59, which would allow us to proceed with the 46 as restriped. And I'll be happy to address any questions that you may have. Mr. Olfak? Uh, from the one group you've already had under contract or, or potentially agreement to use this, what is the number of staff that they have and what is their plan of how many people they plan on, visitors, patients, they plan seeing at any given time? I'll, I'll defer to Steve. I'm not sure if that information's known yet because they've just got a commitment uh, from them to come into the space. Okay. So they, I don't believe they've designed out the space in particular. Is that correct, Steve? I, I, I don't, they don't provide us that information. Normally tenants don't, um, so we don't, we don't have that information. I think the one, the one thing I would point out is that if you look at the parking calculations, the only use that would be allowable on this site under the current regulations would be, I think, the furniture sales. Um, based on the existing parking count, we can't use the building for anything in the zoning district except for that one use. Um, so I think that's, that's important. But we don't know. They don't tell us that information. I mean, I think the obvious question that I would want to ask is, is clearly not in your interest to not have your patients to be able to easily access your building. So if you come up with a little bit of a parking pinch, I'm assuming you can go across the street, buy a parking permit for your employees, they can park in the structure, right. your patients can park on site. Which is what, I mean, we're located on 4th Street, so we have no parking and, uh, in, our, in our corporate office. So, you know, that's what everybody in town does. We just happen to be across the street right. from right. what considered everybody else in town. Yes, ma'am. I was wondering if you have a target for how many different medical offices would be in there. You have a, a, a commitment for one for 5,000 square feet, so you have, you know. Yeah, we don't, we, we are working with multiple different tenants, whether they be medical or office. Um, from a procedural standpoint, we can't proceed with our building permit to start a construction on the project until this variance is in place. So. We, I think we just sort of decided that we would take one of them, so that we didn't end up having to come back to you. If we do fill it all with medical, then we're covered. Although we are talking to other tenants that are non-medical users that are just office users. So where I was going with it was that if you have more individual offices, you might need less parking because you would have, depending on how much of those Less separate utilities or yeah. separate more bathrooms or whatever. I'm not, and we did create a common corridor sure. because of the nature of the site um, with the parking in the back and the street presence on the, on, the north, on the south side of the building and the parking on the north side of the building. We created a corridor through the building so that um, tenants within the building would be able to have access to the pedestrian friendly 11 mile directly, but also have access to parking in the back. So we did take up a bunch of the building, almost a thousand square feet, I think, with just the common corridor. And, and the other thing I'd note, is, I'm sorry, is that we, you know, we, we did, by restriping it, we are getting to 46, which I think is probably where it would, you know, end up anyway, and that's what we're, we're requesting tonight. Um, we did cite in our application two other variances that have come before you. One was a, a for waiver of seven of a required 15 parking spaces, which is a 50% waiver. Uh, this is much less. I mean, this is a, a fairly minor waiver of the overall requirement, but it'll enable the property to be repurposed and, uh, and continue to be renovated for both the user that's coming in and the marketing of future users uh, on the property. So. Any other questions for the possessor? Yes, sir. Would, um, I'm, was this the maximum you could squeeze on here doing any various options on the parking, or was there another layout that might have uh, optimized it even more and, but sacrificed something else? I, I think Nancy can probably answer. I don't, yeah. No, we, we took a look at a couple different options, um, played around with it, and this was best for circulation, you know, you, you might have squeezed more, but then circulation <coughs> might have suffered. And so this is probably the best um, solution. Right. Any other questions? Right, I'd say again, I'm going to ask you folks to take a seat real quickly so I can open Thank up you. the public hearing. Thank you, sir.
Is there anybody in the audience that would like to address the board on this matter? <clears throat> yes, sir. Greetings. Uh, Dave Niffen, 206 North Troy Street. Um, I own the home directly north of this property in question. Uh, lived there for 10 years, and it was the fish market for most of that time. And I can say, I mean, granted, that's a totally different business, but the parking had never exceeded over 60% of that lot until it was used as a valet lot for Imagine, then it was 100%, and then uh, recently, apparently, uh, the farmer's market parks there, and they'll fill up 100%. Other than that, it was never a full parking lot to begin with for the past 10 years, not even like during a holiday fish buy or anything. <laughs> so I have no concerns from my, from my uh, perspective being the next-door neighbor. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? All right, not seeing any hands, I will go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to this side of the table. Yes, sir. I'll make a motion to approve. I have a motion. Support. Second. I think these are a great uses to fill a, a vacant storefront right now. I think you did the best to maximize the parking that you could. And as Mr. Kroll pointed out, we have a parking deck right across the street. So thank you. Mr. Gavin, any follow-up? Uh, I've only been on the board for a few months, it seems like. But it seems like I, I think the uh, petitioner is right. I feel like our parking ordinances are a little overbearing. So I, it's just a common problem I've already noticed. So that's... Uh, I think this is a reasonable request. Did I see a hand down here, Mr. Ofak? Um, I think the hardship they have is walking to the spot and not knowing exactly how many they're going to need, but know that they're not going to need as many as what's required. And being close by to the parking, I think that's our acceptable, as well as the fact of just simply, hey, if you force someone to have to go to a parking deck, they're not going to probably be your patient because they hardly want to park. So my guess is they're going to right-size it so that they don't have to worry about running out of spots between staff and... Mr. Kroll. I don't know how we take into consideration all the parking we've just built. Um, and because you're on the other side of the street, um, that thing doesn't mean you can't utilize it. And we haven't even talked about the parking deck around the corner as well. So. Um, they have the option of having their employees park in the deck. Um, it doesn't seem like anybody's going to park on 11 Mile Road because you can't. So if someone's, uh, you know, it's one of these water seeking its own level. I think if um, um, they won't have any patience if there's nowhere to park, so I, I, I'm, I'm comfortable that they'll figure that out. Anybody else? Yeah, I was just going to mention. I don't see a furniture or appliance store making it on that <laughs> corner. <laughs> So I'm happy to grant this variance and see this new business. All right, not seeing anybody. I will go ahead and call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Thank you. All right. switch room. ready. All right, so the next case before the board is for 1414 Vincetta Boulevard. This is a variance request to exceed the uniform 3,500 square feet maximum floor area that is permitted in any of the single family um, residential zone districts in the city of Royal Oak. So the property in question is located on the east side of Vincetta Boulevard. Um, it is zoned one family residential, large lot, and has a lot area of approximately 19,000 square feet. The site is improved with a two story single family uh, dwelling with an attached garage. Uh, the petitioner proposes to add a two story rear addition to the home to accommodate um, can't quite recall what uh, what portion of their home, um, but a, a two-story addition located on the rear. And let me just scroll to a better image here. So here's the existing property here. And as you can 
as you can see on this survey, um, the proposed addition is located in the back. Um, as I stated, the zoning ordinance um, mandates that 3,500 square feet is the maximum living area in a property. So living area um, is not, um, does not include anything in the basement if it's finished. Um, it's generally anything um, with a um, either, you know, yeah, just living space. So um, I think that might cover it unless you have other questions. The only question I have, and yeah. I'm, I'm looking for the number, I'm just not seeing it sure. here. As proposed, what would the total percentage of lot coverage be? That's the same question I have. Yeah, have. so. It says. Uh, I'm just not finding it for some reason. Page, I know I saw it. It's on the survey. It says 13.1%. Thank you. All right. yep. That's with the addition or without it? It says proposed coverage, so that would make with, me assume with the addition. And the current lot area is 19,000 square feet, so. Yeah. yeah. It's over 19. Any other questions for staff? All right, not seeing any. Is the petitioner present? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Matthew Gibb, uh, 33 North Saginaw and Pontiac. I'm here on behalf of and with James Proctor and his wife Anne Marie is here as well. Just a couple things to add to uh, your, your good planner's comments regarding uh, this plan. Then Mr. Proctor is going to tell you some of the justification, the intent, and the, the burdens and hardships. Uh, we do by way of uh, neighbor support. There were two letters that were submitted to the city ahead of time. Um, since that time, there's been five other residents that have signed uh, letters of support. Um, if I could, uh, uh, William Adams. Uh, Actually, point. if you could hand those to Mr. Olfax, that okay? We'll, we'll yeah. just pass yeah. around as we're listening. Around. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Absolutely. There has been strong support in the neighborhood. The, you know, the purpose of this really is to only add 930.2 square feet to a very, very beautiful home on Vincetta. It happens to be an area of Royal Oak with large lots, with larger homes. This request would make this home very consistent with other homes within the neighborhood. Uh, there's been other properties in the past that have asked for similar requests. Um, but beyond that justification, which really isn't a basis for a variance, this is a reasonable exception to the ordinance that would allow a hardship that Mr. Proctor will explain going forward that really is in two characters, in two areas. One is a, a family need uh, for the space within the house, but really maintaining the consistency of the investment within the property. Currently the house is approximately 3,200 square feet. This would boost that total square footage to um, just over 4,100 square feet. There are other properties on this street that are identical to that. It is a large lot, 13% uh, lot coverage. There's no other variances that are really even uh, near, near to be requested. It doesn't affect setbacks. It doesn't affect anything other than the square footage of, of the property itself. Uh, so after you hear Mr. Proctor, I'll just conclude um, at that time. But it really bases that it's the minimum reasonable alternative to the ordinance to allow this investment to continue. One of the great factors right now in Royal Oak is to see so many people working to improve the long-term investment of the property uh, without adding 400 square feet or so on the first floor to expand the basis of that living area and adding what he'll explain as a family need um, on the second floor. It'd be difficult to maintain that investment going forward and comparative to the rest of the neighborhood. But I'd like to now cut my remarks short and allow Mr. Proctor to add his remarks of why they want to do this. Thanks, Matt. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, board. Uh, my name is Jim Proctor. My wife, Anne Marie, is here. Uh, we live at 1414 Vincetta. Uh, we've been um, in, in Vincetta Boulevard. We're at south of 12 Mile and east of Woodward. Uh, we've been residents of Royal Oak for over 20 years. Uh, the close, close proximity of our home to uh, downtown Royal Oak and the National Shrine at Little Flower, where we're parishioners, uh, allows us to ride our bikes and uh, participate in many of the community services that uh, Royal Oak has to offer. Uh, the proposed addition, which Julie put together, uh, is a, adds to our variance for 630 square feet. This addition will provide an updated kitchen on the first floor and provide an additional master suite on the second floor. From the outside of the home, the proposed addition will match the existing finishes and fill what you saw on the uh, diagram, that little keyhole that's in there. Uh, the addition will approximately stick out another eight feet from the existing um, structure and will meet all setbacks and lot coverages, which uh, Matt alluded to. The front facade of the home will remain unchanged. Uh, we hired Dick Christie, who is a local general contractor, who is actually the grandson of the original owner, builder, and resident, John Christie. Uh, so Dick will ensure that this addition 
is consistent with the charm and the decor of the existing construction his grandfather built over 20, 75 years ago. The proposed addition will be in conformity with other residential homes and be, that have recently been uh, either newly constructed or updated. Uh, this investment will not only update the, our home, but the uh, appeal to the next generation and uh, increase the value of our house. There are over 20 homes in the area that are over 3,500 square feet. In fact, um, there are 17 homes within a half a mile radius of our house the average that are over 3,500 square feet, and the average square footage of these 17 homes uh, is approximately 4,173 square feet. So the res residence to the immediate north of our uh, house is 4,100 square feet, and the house immediately to our east is 4,516 square feet. The proposed addition will provide the space required for us to allow our aging parents to live with us the space will provide our parents with their own master suite and to enjoy the comfort of being with our family and the knowledge that our parents are being well taken care of. We have met, and you've seen the letters that uh, we met with each one of our neighbors to discuss this individually, and I think all of the neighbors that abut our home have uh, approved and uh, said that they are in favor of this. So based on this information, we respectfully request the board to vote in favor of granting us this variance. Thank you for your consideration. Right. Any questions for the petitioners at this point? All right, not seeing any, I'm going to ask you gentlemen to take a seat real quickly just so I can open up the public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to address the board on this issue? Yes, sir. Hi, uh, Philip Sobeck, 1507 Woodsboro. I'm in the lot uh, directly behind the Proctors. I've seen their drawing. I think that it looks really nice as an addition. Um, I think that their lot coverage, setbacks, all the rest. Um, I kind of think that the 3,500 square foot maximum that they have is somewhat arbitrary given the large lot nature of the Vincetta neighborhood and some of the other Royal Oak neighborhoods. So uh, for a little bit of an addition, I think it's great to have a, a nicer home in the area. So I'd be in favor of it. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, not seeing anybody, I will go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to this side of the table. I saw Mr. Kroll and Mr. Olfak. I'm going to make a motion to approve this. Okay, support. We have a second. Mr. Kroll? That's um, it's kind of my neighborhood. I snuck in the backyard while no one was watching, by the way. <laughs> um, I do that often. Look for big dogs. You know, it's. I know that the Adams house next door is almost 5,000 square feet. Um, I, I think he did a really nice job of, um, uh, I, I, I believe that the 3,500 rule, and people kind of look at us and say, that's kind of a crazy rule, but in fact, there was a time when people were building Bigfoot's next to 1,100 square foot houses and changing the topography, flooding the backyards, getting rid of the sun, and, and, and therefore 3,500 seemed to be a, a reasonable place to go with it. Um, I, I, I think if anywhere, you know, 13% lot coverage certainly would suggest that uh, a larger home can be built there, and it is in a neighborhood of larger homes. So I, I, it was kind of a no-brain to me. And thank you for not having a big dog. <laughs> <laughs> He's inside, good. Who was next, Mr. Olfax? Do you want to speak? Or Mr. Curtis? You support, and, but, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I, I was, it's over 19,000 square foot lot. It's in a, a neighborhood that lots of big homes, and I think it's a great addition. You know, looking at it from my professional perspective, too, I just I think it makes homes that allow families to stay in Royal Oak and continues the trend in Royal Oak for being an attractive community. So I'm, I'm thrilled to see it happen. Yes, sir. Uh, the hardships they have is the fact it's an oversized lot. As we've already said, it's over 19,000 square feet. That's basically three lots put together. So theoretically, one could surmise they should have a lot coverage of three times 3,500. We can give them 11,000, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they are only going for a minor uh, increase over that lot coverage that's required. So uh, by doing that, and their house will do substantial justice to the neighborhood, and improving theirs and making it align with the others, I have no problem. Anybody else? All right, then I will go ahead and call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Thank you. Thank you both. Sure, we can grab the stuff. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, that moves us right along to case number, let me get the right one here. 
case number D3, or case D3, case number 190723, public hearing on the appeal of Kelly Luton, petitioner and owner for the following variances. A, to waive 9.4 feet of the minimum required north front yard setback of 44.4 feet. B, to waive 10 feet of the minimum required rear yard setback of 35 feet. C, to waive 4.1% of the maximum allowable total lot coverage of requirement of 30%. And finally, D, to waive 510.7 square feet of the maximum allowable ground floor area of an 800 square foot of 800 square feet for an accessory structure to permit construction of a one-story single-family home with an attached garage, which would be located at 4105 Highfield. Ms. Sherhart. Yes, so the subject property is located on the southwest corner of Highfield and Parkway Drive. It is a large lot for the one-family residential zone district and totals approximately 12,300 square feet. The property is currently improved with a single-story ranch um, with an attached garage and carport. The petitioner proposes to demolish the existing single family home and to rebuild. I'm just going to go to the survey here, maybe. So you can see the existing site there. So the petitioner proposes to demolish the existing single-family home and rebuild a new dwelling. Um, the applicant hopes to locate the new dwelling at the same um, non-conforming front yard setback that it's currently at. So if you can see from this survey, they currently have a 35-foot setback, which does mirror um, the property to the west, um, but unfortunately that uh, setback is where the garage of that home is, not living space. So the living space of the property next door is 44.4 .4, um, feet, and so the required front yard setback for this home would be 44.4 .4 feet. Um, they'd like to rebuild at that same non-conforming 35-foot um, front setback line, so that would require a variance of 9.4 feet. Um, additionally, as it is a corner lot, um, just taking into consideration um, the required setback on the <coughs> other side of the property. As the home uh, to the south here does not front parkway, uh, the front yard setback requirement is only um, 10 feet and what's proposed um, meets that. So let me just go to what they're proposing here. Um, so the doo -doo 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 -doo. so they are proposing um, another um, variance. So for every um, every site, regardless of interior lot or corner lot, there is a 35 foot required rear yard setback. Um, the petitioner is proposing to build the home at 25 feet, so they are requesting a 10-foot waiver to the required rear yard setback. The next variance that they're hoping for um, regards the garage. Currently, the um, site has a two-car garage and then a single car um, carport. So um, for any property, 800 square feet is the total that you can have for any um, accessory structures on your home. So um, you can have a total of two accessory structures, so attached garage and detached shed or a carport and a accessory structure um, that would be permitted. So currently, um, sorry, not currently, but the applicant proposes uh, a garage that totals approximately 1,300 square feet. This would be 510.1 square feet in excess of the maximum allowable accessory structure ground floor area of 800 square feet. Um, and I'll let the applicant speak to, um, you know, the reasons behind their request there. Um, and then the last variance that they're seeking is uh, regarding total lot coverage. So the requirement for the zone district is 30%. Um, the proposed home um, with the proposed accessory structures total 34.1% um, uh, lot coverage. So they're requesting uh, a waiver of 4.1% or 501.8 square feet. 
if you have other questions for me. Any questions for staff at this point? Yes, ma'am. Um, you mentioned that the current front yard setback will meet, will be the same as the proposed front yard setback, but the rear setback, is that? That's proposed less? to change, yes, okay. yes. Yes, sir. Uh, do you understand the, the general, the average setback along Highfield? And just from my observation, it appears to be close to 35, looking at aerial views yeah. and also driving the street. I have more of an aerial earlier in this presentation, so let me go to that. So it is kind of a small block here. Um, and you know, you can see the portion of the home, um, that is closest to the front, um, property line that is currently at 35 feet. So that's what they're proposing. Um, and again, it is in line with, uh, the garage of the next, the home next door. Um, and it does appear that some of and across the street the, as well, yeah. mm -hmm. those appear pretty close. Yeah. I don't have numbers on them, but... Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Well, I, I'm not quick enough with my math in my head, but sure. if there was an 800-square-foot garage, not a 1,300-plus-square-foot mm -hmm. garage, would there be coverage issues? Um, they would be right at total lot coverage, as the coverage request is for about 500 square feet and... 1,300 minus 500 is the 800 square feet. Mm -hmm. So it, it, likely without the bigger garage, there would be within the 30% coverage. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Is the petitioner present? There's a lot of them. I'm Jeremiah Armstrong. I'm the designer for the project. Uh, it's uh, Kelly and Rich over here that are proposing to live in the space. Um, we have a, a little bit of a um, difficulty on this lot being a quarter lot and um, the size of it. Uh, we're trying to maximize their living space. Uh, it's a double lot as well. So um, if we were to split it into two separate lots, we would most likely be in the range of filling that percentage of lot coverage because it would be larger on a smaller, uh, less than 6,000 square foot lot. Um, the requirements for a larger garage, I'll let them discuss that with you. Uh, but the front yard setback, uh, we're trying to remove, give them a, a better design of a ranch home, uh, a better, better design in keeping with the nature of the, the neighborhood. But I'll let them go over their um, requirements and then I can answer any questions you have. Okay, great. I'll probably let my husband talk more about the garage, but there's good reasons. Um, I'm Kelly. I've been a daughter of Royal Oak for 30 years. I've lived on Chester Street. I raised my family. My daughter went to Kimball. I own a company in Delamere called Teeny Caters and Event Planners. We're very invested in Royal Oak. My husband passed away nine years ago, and then I met this guy bike riding, and we have a blended family now, so it's kind of created some problems. I have not been willing to give up my Royal Oak house, so I still have my house on Chester Street, and we also have a house in Bloomfield, and we live between the two houses. So this has been going on for, you know, close to two years. We've been looking, 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 because I have refused to leave Royal Oak. I'm like, my business is here, you know, this is where I'm staying. And when Highfield popped up, it was just like magic. We were just like out for a walk. My sister lives a couple of streets over. We saw the house, we saw it was a double lot. We just thought we could probably make this happen. You know, we called a couple friends, you know, what do you think? You know, so on and so forth. So we bought the house about a year ago, and we've just been kind of like waiting and talking to Jeremiah and trying to come up with a really thoughtful plan. So we, we think we've done that. Um, we do have a blended family between the two of us. We have six children. Um, some of them are older and gone, thank God. But we still have some boys at home, some cars, and, you know, we do some, Rich will talk more about it, but he works on bikes and helps people with some things like that. So we kind of need the space. Um, I have bad knees, so we opted, I'm heading for a new replacement actually, so we opted to do all single level dwelling, which I've never had, so it'll be a welcome thing in my life to have a ranch. We're just really excited about it. Um, I, didn't, I didn't get like letters from neighbors, but I went and talked to a whole bunch of people and they're really excited about it. The ones 
uh, west of us were on vacation. I tried three times, but everybody in the block seems to know, like everybody and everything. They seem excited about the possibility. Um, I liked what one of you said about you want people to invest in Royal Oak. I mean, that's what we're trying to do. And we've been looking for almost two years to do that. We finally, hopefully, found the space that allows us to do that. So it's a mile from my business, and we're excited about the whole Beaumont, like Wahlburger thing over there. So we're just hoping to stay. That's all. And then Garage? Yeah, I'm moving over. So uh, I'm Rich Frost. And um, so and we've been married for about two years, wonderful woman here. And in addition to the two unique, Kelly is also a consultant with OCC, bringing, helping to bring the culinary, um, uh, uh, the, their culinary program down into downtown Royal Oak. So when she says vested in Royal Oak, she means with a capital V. <laughs> okay, um, she contributes a lot. Um, so as she said, so I, I have been in Bloomfield for 25 years. Um, I currently have a, a five-car garage. Uh, with our blended families, we have, you know, three uh, children who are driving area of driving age who will live with us and are going to be commuting to school. And then we also have the um, uh, her daughter who. Uh, is out of state but stays with us a lot. And so, and occasionally she'll bring one of the two unique vehicles home. So at any one time, and we are successful, we have our normal cars and then we have, a, we each have a convertible. So between us, we have, you know, seven vehicles <laughs> uh, with, with the children and stuff like that. So we don't want them on the street. So we really, you know, the garage space is really important to us. Um, in addition to that, um, you know, Royal Oak has invested, you know, very heavily in being bicycle friendly. And all of our family are bicyclists. So with a road bike and a mountain bike, that amounts to 12 bicycles, right? Um, and so, you know, we just we want a space to use it. So we worked very hard with Jeremiah to really work with every single, you know, angle we could to meet Kelly's medical needs to, for the, the first level. Uh, you know, we, we understand the coverage and the drain off, and um, Jeremiah has done a lot of work with that. And this corner lot is unique in the fact that it, it has um, a very a 20 foot or 25 foot green belt between the street and where the lot is. So there's an extra large, you know, green space in there. So even though our setback is like 20 feet on this one side, it's really, you know, 40, 45 feet from the road. And so in all, there's, you know, it's really preserving the the, the look and feel of the neighborhood. Again, we didn't want to have this lot go to uh, builders and have a couple of colonials put in there. We talked to all the neighbors. They, you know, they had no problems with the garage. They, you know, like the the airiness of it, the freshness of the look, and the house, the neighborhood has a substantial number of ranches in there. We wanted to kind of preserve that look with the ranches. Um, so I think Any questions, Mr. Kroll? Yeah. I haven't quite heard a hardship here yet. We, we grant variances based on hardships, and I've yet to hear one. So I would say the um, what we didn't want to do is with the, ve the number of vehicles that we have and the, um, you know, basically what we require for our bicycles and stuff like that, we, you know, we, we minimize, you know, we need that much space for the, um, to, to, for the vehicles. Unfortunately, children and cars and bikes and things are expensive and sometimes a pain, but they're not a hardship because they go away. The, the variance we give goes to the property and, and stays forever. So cars and things like that. So, so another, another thought of this is that if it was, you know, um, it is actually two lots, so we're spanning two lots. So if this were to be broken up, there would be a total of, you know, 1,600 square feet of garage would be, you know, legitimate on this property. And I know it doesn't work that way, but, no, we, thought we, that way. but we thought we kept within the, 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 the general design guidelines and, and continuity of the neighborhood. Mr. Clapp. So I, I guess some degree of hardship may be medical related because my first question was, well, why can't you just do two stories? Why do you need a ranch? You, can't walk, you should have seen me walk up these three flights of stairs. Yeah. I have a, a labral chair and I'm headed for two knee replacements. Yeah. Like right now we're designing my wheelchair shower. And I guess just a lot, like if we can't do this, then someone else will probably build two big houses on it and it'll be more than we're asking you for. Like that, I don't mean that unkindly, it's just true. So our hope was that I mean, everybody I, could win. Yeah, I mean, I think it fits the neighborhood, right? It, the continuity of the neighborhood. I mean, again, there's a, there's a, a, you know, there's a, 
two-car garage right there now. There's a car and a half carport, right, made out of T T111 with a lean-to on it and stuff like that. And we're proposing to, you know, take that, you know, extra one and a half carport, make it a two-car garage with storage for the bicycles. So and and build a, you know, a, you know, really a beautiful residence there that enhances the neighborhood. Any other questions? Mizuka. Did you talk to the neighbors directly across Parkway from you? Yes. yes they're yeah. lovely. Yes. And they don't have a problem with the... Not at all. We had, yeah, we had tea and cookie, cookies yeah. with them. <laughs> yeah, cookies yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. They're very, they were actually very excited, right, because they look at that open carport, and they actually requested a bush be put there to hide that carport and stuff. Like well, that's that, going so. away anyway because you're tearing everything down. Yeah, so, so we, if we go forward with this, yeah. So they, they were actually very excited about it. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Well, I don't think it's a given that you could put two houses here for one thing because it's, it's, it, doesn't, it's, it doesn't have 100 foot of frontage on one whole side, at least the way I'm reading it. But the second thing I was going to ask you is, have, would you be able to, being as you have a couple other houses, and would you be able to live with a three-car garage? I, we've gone through. You could make a nice, handsome-looking one. The way we, it's we, laid out. We, we've actually gone through that, and, and I mean, we have, you know, we we have a total of, you know, at any one time seven cars there. So, and, and two of them are very expensive, which need to be housed all the time. So basically, if you put, you know, two cars in there and a vice, the bicycles, you've got nowhere to park any cars you're using. And well, I we, understand that, but there are places to store classic vehicles and things like that that aren't at people's homes, and a lot of people do that because they don't have this the facilities in their personal residence to do that. So we actually drive these vehicles. So what I have seen, you know, and, and I have friends who try that, and they, we said, you know, we looked at putting lifts on and stuff like that. And, you know, what we found is that they just don't get used. You, if, if the car is four blocks away stored at, you know, some garage, you don't go out and drive it. You know, Kelly likes to, if it's a sunny day, she'll go out and drive the convertible. If it's not, so, I mean, we were... We really looked at our lifestyle of, of what we use and what we think is, um, you know, reasonable, and, you know, um, and tried to maximize it given the, 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 the two lots on it. Any other questions? All right, not seeing any. I'm going to ask you folks to take a seat real quickly so I can open up the public hearing. Yeah. And who would like to speak first? Good evening. My name is Steve Baldwin. I live at 4102 Amherst. I'm in the house directly behind them. Um, nobody has ever talked to us. Um, and I have a petition here, and I'll give you a copy of this, actually several. We are opposing items C and D on this. I have 84 signatures from the immediate houses around us, plus in the neighborhood opposing the additional size of the garage and so forth. So I'll hand those to you. People directly across the street oppose this as well that they made reference to. Um, so we're, we're opposing item C, which is the 4.1%, and item D, which is the 510 square feet. The petitioner states that she is proposing a 1,242 square foot four-car accessory building which is consistent with the existing garage and carport. The existing garage is 483 square feet. The carport's 364 for a total of 847, not 1,200. Petitioner is actually requesting a variance of 510 over the maximum allowable of 800, which is a total of 1,357 square feet, much larger. This, part, this garage is not in keeping, sorry, with the, uh, with the neighborhood. I moved to Royal Oak when I was 10 months old, and I'm still here. And, you know, I'd like to maintain the neighborhood as it is, neighborhoods. Uh, the proposed accessory building associated concrete or four-car driveway would certainly add stormwater a runoff into the city sewer system and create a negative impact on the neighborhood. The floor plans indicate that two bays of the accessory building are deeper by 4 foot 11 inches, which is where it shows it stepped, which would suggest a larger vehicle. Applicant also states that two unique vehicle would often be at the home. Two unique is their catering company, which would be a commercial vehicle. 
applicant states that the new home will utilize two subdivision lots so the average outbuilding per lot would be approximately 600 square foot per lot that would be a total of 1200 square foot the applicant is requesting 1357 square feet actually the west lot is not a full lot a portion of that lot was sold off in 1970 to build the house to the west of them so that colonial that's there needed that additional property and the homeowner sold that we've lived in this house for 30 years in closing we are not specifically opposed to items a and b on the requested variances but not having a four-car garage should definitely not be considered as a hardship much of her reasoning is based on her personal opinion and we would really be looking at the facts and how it will negatively impact our neighborhood and again nobody talked to us at all and we've lived there a long time thank you thank you sir and who wants to go next Good evening, I'm Diane Hawley. I live on Amherst. Um, I pretty much have the same uh, concerns. In fact, I did sign the petition, my husband and I. It's our concern is the four car garage because according to the report of findings that I was reading, extraordinary and exceptional conditions and I did not see that having so many cars and children coming back from out of state would mean that they would need a four-car garage. Um, as you said, um, children do change, but the, the variance does not. So um, we had four children. We had five cars. Um, we had to deal with it without a four-car garage. Um, also, if I was reading correctly, the general compatibility, and I didn't know if that was for homes that were being built or if that was for businesses, but it had to be compatible to the surrounding area, and I don't see any four-car garages. And I guess my last is the, we talk about the uh, uh, carport that is there. And so I did come to the city and I asked to see if there was, um, if they had got a variance or if they had gotten a permit for that. Um, and there was nothing that could be found um, that said it was permitted. So does that mean the owners previously just put it up and it's illegal to begin with? So I just have some questions about that. And as I said, uh, we are not in alignment with the four car garage and I do believe and I can't uh, say this for certain but I know our lot is one and a half and it's I also checked this it's a 60 foot and a 30 foot so most of the lots there are either 60 or a double lot would be 120 and they just built two colonials right next to us um, on 60 foot lots so I don't think the lot they have is a true two, uh, two house lot. Thank you. Thank you. And who wants to go next? I think he does. <laughs> Becca, <laughs> come on, I'm running up the aisle. With that, uh, Sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, my name's Steve Grobel. I live at 4032 Amherst, which is the uh, southeast corner of Amherst and Parkway. The proposed uh, new building is would be at the sort of the northwest corner so I'm kind of kitty corner our two uh, driveways look at each other and I'm, I'm sorry to have to meet my new neighbor under these circumstances um, I, I uh, be honest I'm, I'm a fan of the design uh, and the aesthetic of their home but um, what I'm not a fan of is the four car garage idea so unfortunately I'm here too to uh, voice my opposition to that, um, quite frankly, I just think it's a bit of out, out of character for the neighborhood. Uh, it's, it's an older neighborhood of, you know, 1,500 square foot ranches and bungalows and two car garages. Uh, this is a, you know, 2,800 a square foot and a four car garage. I just think that it's uh, sort of aesthetically um, out of place a bit. Um, uh, I. A couple of issues uh, uh, I took the the uh, suggestion that this 1,300 square foot uh, new garage, uh, the proposed garage, is consistent with the existing uh, garage and carport. Uh, I think is just simply not not correct. Um, that those uh, 
uh, the current uh, garage and carport about 850 square feet roughly. Uh, so we're looking at a, if I do my math, about a 64% uh, waiver here. That's a pretty significant waiver and I think uh, frankly a waiver that's just a little too big um, for the neighborhood. Um, I don't uh, agree that it improves the uh, the aesthetic appeal. Certainly, I, I think I think the overall home is is, a, is quite a lovely looking home. But a uh, big four car garage, I'll be staring at. Essentially, that whole side there that faces Parkway um, is going to be a four car garage uh, that that I'm looking at. And not to mention the fairly vast swath of concrete that is associated with the four car garage. Uh, and also some concern about the runoff, as, as Steve had mentioned. So um, sort of in, in, in finish, the, uh, when I'm looking here at what the, the commission, or the board, I'm sorry, is uh, tasked with in terms of uh, the requirements that, that the petitioner must meet, and again, it's, it's her burden here. Um, I, I frankly I just don't see that all four of them are met and again all all of these need to be met as opposed to just some of the four um, I don't think that um, there's anything that unreasonably prevents um, the petitioner from using this for her permitted purpose and quite frankly the the hardship that's been alleged to the extent there has been one alleged wasn't is, is frankly created by the petitioner I mean this is their this is their proposed drawing uh, with the four car garage, uh, the only reason that they're seeking a variance is because that's how um, they have designed it. So, um, in, uh, in summary, I think just it just doesn't quite uh, fit with the character of the neighborhood. I appreciate the, <laughs> the kids and the cars, and I've got a couple and a couple of cars, and I understand. And I'm a bike rider myself, and I carry them up and down the basement every time I go out, and I get it. And I'd love to have a four car garage. Um, but I, I just don't think uh, the corner of, of Parkway and Amherst is the place to do it. Thanks. Thank you, sir. And who's next? Anybody else? Going once. Going once, going twice. All right, I will. Did you want to come up, ma'am? No, I, I jacked that. Oh, okay. I, I thought you wanted to say that. Okay, so, all right, I will go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to this side of the table. And why don't you folks come back up to the microphone, too, in case we have any additional questions for you. Mr. Alpac? I do have one additional question to the petitioner. After hearing all the concern about the amount of garage, um, would you be amenable to, if, it, if we gave you any kind of uh, leniency on the garage, having it match or be a little bit over what it is now, which is approximately 850 square feet? Um, like, say, 850 to 900 or something like that. I think we could go back and you know rework the plan. I mean, it's just it's um, yeah. I mean, we we, we you know, certainly you know we want again Kelly's committed to Royal Oak. We want to make yeah, it not, work, but make it work here. But you know, we're not looking to you know crush anybody's dreams or property values or homes or what they look at. Like we just really thought we we're going to bring something really nice. We thought it would be like a, an investment for everybody. It would be nice for property values. Like we're just looking for, like, where we can have our forever home together. Like, we weren't looking to encroach on anybody's rights. I was really shocked by this. Yeah. And I, I stopped three times at your house, and your truck was always in the mm -hmm. driveway, and I knocked on the door, and you were never home. Ma'am. Oh, no. Oh, 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 everybody stop. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I just feel terrible. I didn't Please know. Please just address us, and let's oh, I'm sorry. Okay. No, no okay, worries. I, I apologize. I'm, I'm just literally, like, I'm shaking. I'm so, like, surprised. It, I... I I feel ignorant. I apologize. Oh, we could try. Oh, yes. So uh, just follow up with what Mr. Ovik is asking. So question occurs to me, would it prefer to be tabled and reworked rather than voted on tonight? Um, and one of the reasons I bring that up is because uh, a new case number means a new fee. <laughs> as opposed to reworking the proposed variances. We can look at reworking well, the plan. And, and I was also going to say you have the option to vote in on each individual variance, do you not? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just wanted to bring that up. Well, the one concern I have is if, trying to figure out in my head, if we shrank down the garage, 
that would shrink down the percentage over lot coverage, but the right. house footprint, it's still, even if you had 800 square feet garage, would still be over a certain percentage. And I'm trying to figure out what that percentage is because I, I do understand her medical hardship as to why they didn't go a two-story building. And, and then I, I, I can, it, it is not of the normal hardships, but it is one of those things that they do have an oversized lot I can understand going over a little bit to allow the medical hardship to be gone through with uh, for keeping it a ranch. It's just that I don't know what that percentage would be to keep with the house footprint along right, with right. a reduced garage. Oh, it's not our job to figure it out. No, I, 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 I agree with <laughs> yeah. that. But I, I, how do you word the variance in such a way that... Hmm? Mr. Carl, please. Hmm. Hardship is a hardship. You know, uh, the, the nature of what we do up here, we have a set of criteria. Children aren't on it, cars aren't on it. There's a lot of things that we've talked about today that just aren't on it. Um, we're starting with a clean sheet of paper. You could build anything you want. The lot's fairly large. Um, and, and I like the design very much other than the garages. Um, what, what happens, and the reason why the, when the variance goes with the property, you're not going to live there forever. The next person in is either going to have a car collection or they're going to be an electrician and working out of that garage. And, that, and that's why we have limited space for garage. Bloomfield Hills has a different view of it than, than Royal Oak. They have larger property lines, um, and they allow for that, where we don't. And, and that's the exact reason we don't, because they turn into workshops once the people with the cars move out. Um, the, the, there is no hardship to suggest that we should give you that amount of garage space. I love the house. I'd be willing to go yes on one and two. Um, figure out, bring us something better. I, I, I think I, I, I would be willing to, to take a look at this again next month with bring this thing back. With, every neighbor in the neighborhood doesn't like it. So you're not enhancing the neighborhood. You're really just doing this for yourselves. And if none of them showed up, I'd say, well, I'd still have a problem with the garage. But seeing that all your neighbors showed up, um, it, it suggests to me that there's a problem here. Any other comments, um, Mr. Curtis? While we're commenting, yes. I think I've heard that the um, setbacks are not the So hardship with the corner lot and the setbacks are, I can't speak for the whole board, but in my opinion, <laughs> are things that I would be willing to grant variances on. So no. my two cents is that that's not the issue. So, Mr. Olfak to Mr. Clatt. The question I have is you've heard about us possibly delaying to table this to next month to rework the garage. Would you be even willing to do that, or do you want us to rule on this one way or another? Well, it like, sounded interesting. It would probably be hopeful if we thought the other couple were agreeable and then sure let's figure out the garage thing but if if we had confidence in that I think it's we'd like to give it a go of course would your architect need to know like what if what if you need a different variance because you're shrinking the garage then on what was it B or even um, the north front yard setback no but w will that interfere with any of the overall plan no I mean if, if if obviously I think the issue right now is to reduce the garage a bit um, that would make everything else a, a bit more in conformance um, so it would be a lesser variance request than what's coming now so uh, it's, any changes we make going forward will reduce the issue um, it's not going to cause any more hardship so I think we, we could go through try and adapt it a bit and, and see if we can come up with something a bit better or more like to the neighbors. Mr. Olfak. Well, oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's okay. okay. All right, I'm sorry. All right. Yes, sir. In, in hearing that, I don't know if anyone else has a opinion, but I'd like to propose to table this to next month for them to let them come back. I'll support that. All right. Any discussion on this motion? A as you can hear, they want to be working with their neighbors as well as with us as to try and get something that's the best solution that makes everyone happy. So because of that, I'd like to, instead of trying to push this through and make maybe the wrong decision, allow them to come back and see us. So that's my opinion of tabling it to next month. It, it, it would be good if we come back also that your neighbors are kind of on your side as opposed to the other side. That would be helpful for you. 
Yeah, because I mean, I don't just want to see this flat out die initially because it, it really is a beautiful yeah, home. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the design is stunning. I yeah. mean, it, 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 I think it'd be a great addition if we could just sort of rein in those little issues and take another bite at the apple and see if we can get it right next month. Okay, thank you so much. All right, well, let me. Uh, well, we need a vote, right? Yeah, <laughs> let me. <laughs> So I would like you to do a vote to table this until next month. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. Thank See you next you. month. Thank, Thank you, you, folks. Did you second that? Yeah. Will we get a notification on the next hearing? You will. No, you no, 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 no. Just no. assume come back we'll next month. Back next month. Yeah. This will be the second Tuesday. Correct. Thursday. 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 Yeah. Thursday. 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 Second Thursday. Correct. Okay. Okay. Oh, you're right. It's tabled. Yeah, it's We're not opposed. I mean, if it was 847 three-car garage, we could live with that. The neighbors were pretty adamant about not wanting to work our garage. We got this. Sounds like you'll be hearing from them, and hopefully you can yeah. all come to a resolution. Yeah. Thank you, folks, for coming out. All right, so where am I? Let the room clear out here for a second. Right, moving right along, we are on item D4, case number 190724, public hearing on the appeal of Patrick Ray, petitioner, and Joshua and Yuan Shilar, owner for the following variances. Wave 16 foot of the minimum required rear yard setback of 35 feet and to wave one foot of the minimum required accessory side yard setback of five feet to per permit construction of a new single family home with an attached garage to be located at 2221 Barrett. Fish your heart. All right, so this is a request for the demolition of this existing single family home and a rebuild. The property is located on the north side of Barrett Avenue, west of Helene. So this is sort of in the um, uh, north of uh, 696 and east of Maine. Uh, the property is zone one family residential, but it is non-conforming in lot width and lot area. The lot is 40 feet wide and totals uh, 4,240 square feet, while the required lot width uh, for the zone district is 50 feet and the lot area would be 6,000 square feet. Uh, the petitioner proposes to demolish the existing home and construct a two-story single-family dwelling with an attached garage. Let me just navigate to that um, image here for the audience. Okay, so... Um, they're proposing uh, the garage to be located at the rear of the home. Um, the living space on the first floor does um, encroach into the required 35-foot rear setback. So on the first floor, um, the living space encroaches by 9 feet. But if you look at the um, second story, this is actually maybe a better image, um, the second story does have some living space above the garage, and so that living space encroaches 16 feet into the rear setback. So what that means is that um, the petitioner is seeking a variance to waive 16 feet of the required 35 feet uh, rear yard setback. Um, the other variance involved in the request tonight regards the setback of the uh, accessory structure. So given the width of the property, typically a, um, a lot that's less than 45 feet wide would have uh, four feet setbacks for an attached garage. However, because the garage is located entirely within the rear yard and the height of the garage is 15 feet, our ordinance requires um, a five foot setback. And so the other variance associated with this configuration is uh, a waiver for one foot of the required five feet for the accessory structure as four feet is provided. Um, do you have uh, any other questions for me? Ms. Anderson first, then Mr. Ofek. My question is, um, I noticed that the house is on this block, and mm -hmm. I can't tell because I can't really see, but if you look at the f first mm -hmm. um, schematic of sure. the, Here. You see, they kind of do a step thing. And so as you get to the corner, on that corner of the Barrett and, and Helene, it 
th that last house is further back than even the one the one we're speaking of and the one before that. Is the petitioner going to put the footprint right there, right where the old house was, or is he going to pull it forward? And if he and can he pull it forward mm. at all? I believe the it's going to be rebuilt at a similar front setback because um, it is, I think, kind of, let me go to the site plan. Yeah, the, the required front yard setback is, um, yeah, going to be the average of those two, which is probably around. It's at 40. Uh, mm -hmm. For those feet. two or the whole block? It's just the adjacent homes. Okay, so... I, so maybe we can look at some of that to maybe get some space, I guess is what I was hoping for, to move the structure forward within the allowances if there was... Well, it has to any, meet right, that I, front set... I understand that. Excuse so, me, front setback. So I think, you know during preliminary discussions, and I can have the applicant speak to this, I think they were sort of thinking about whether to ask for a front setback, a rear setback, some combination of the two, and they've obviously opted to just go for the rear setback. Okay. Variance request. All right, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Opek, I think you're next. Yes, do you know what the current setback on that side of the existing house is? It's not on that, that uh, survey of what the existing one is. I understand what the new one mm. is. Well, if, I, if it's not on the survey, then I doubt that I know. <laughs> okay. I, I didn't know if it, that just happened to be in notes that wasn't on the site survey from records. Okay. Mm. I can ask them when they step forward yeah. if they happen to know. Can I ask one question? Fire away. Thank you. So I'm reading mm -hmm. our notes. Uh, a, a structure uh, yeah, that's all in the rear, within the rear yard, main, it, it needs a three foot setback if that structure is 13 feet or less. Correct. This structure, the garage, mm -hmm. is 15 feet. And for every one foot of height, you mm -hmm. need one more foot of setback. Correct. So, it would have been a five-foot setback, except this is a proposed four-foot setback. Exactly. So, if this was a 14-foot high garage, it wouldn't need that variance. Correct. Oh, good. I figured it straight. Good. Thanks. And there is sort of a, this is a, I don't know if I can call it odd, but a scenario where the setback requirement for a principal structure is four feet, given the lot width but due to the height of the garage, it, it changes it even though a primary structure could be 30 feet, so. Yeah, so the house itself can be four feet. Mm -hmm. Set back. Mm -hmm. hmm. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, not seeing anybody. Is the petitioner present? Yeah, please come forward. Tell us about your plan. Um, well, yeah. done. 14 feet. Okay. <laughs> so that would eliminate work, the request for sir, one set. Introduce yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. Please. Patrick no Ray, Hill and Holmes. Thank you. Um, that's a, a fantastic point. We mm -hmm. talked about that before we came out. Um, we don't need the 15. We can go to the 14, which would eliminate, I believe, request B. Mm. Okay. So, yeah. Josh? Uh, good evening. My name is Josh Shalair. We are uh, the residents on 2221 Barrett. This is my wife, uh, Yen, or Jia Yen is her, her name. Um, I've lived there since 2012. We got married in 2013. Uh, so we're, you know, looking forward to rebuilding a home as we've kind of outgrown our current home. Um, I guess you could say the difficulty that we're facing or the hardship that we're facing is actually kind of noted by you, uh, Miss Anderson, is that the road kind of tapers away from the houses creating very large front yards by the time you reach our, I'd say, five or six houses towards the end of the block, where the second one from the end of the street. So we've got actually a very large front yard and a large setback to stay in line with those other houses. So the, the floor plan that, we, that my wife and I really uh, took many months to kind of imagine 
we drew from a number of other houses that were in the area. So it's, it's not, I think, out of the ordinary. In fact, there's a couple houses that have this type of attached garage on the back and then have a little bit of living space built above that. Um, I believe it's on South Wilson, just off of 11 Mile, behind the ice cream shop there. There's two houses next to each other that have that kind of inspired our idea. Um, to best use the lot size that we have. Um, but obviously that big front yard created problems with the, uh, the setback in the back. So that's the difficulty that we're facing. Um, and we really do hope that this gets granted because uh, that would really allow us to create a nice open first floor plan. Um, I think that would allow for a very nice modern kitchen that we're seeing going into a lot of homes, uh, especially around here. Uh, we're also very active with our church. It would really help accommodate um, when we have Bible studies or when we have groups of people that are over. Um, this also helps us move, I guess you could say, a, a little classic room that's usually up in the front of the house uh, that people often use as an office, uh, but move that upstairs since we would have a little bit more living space on the second floor. Um, and I think that would also help us in terms of just my wife's family being from overseas, from Taiwan, when they visit. It would be very, you know, long term. That would give us more space to help host her family. And I think it would just give more usable space to the next homeowner as well as more value. I have tried to reach out to all the neighbors around us. We got two letters. I think Patrick might have uh, given those to you to look at. Uh, those are the neighbors to the be east and west of us, adjacent to us. Uh, I did try to reach out to the neighbors in the back. Um, I wasn't able to before we visited my wife's family in Taiwan this last month. Um, but our neighbors adjacent to us do support this as well. In fact, they're excited to see another new home going in because we do have a, a number of other new homes in our neighborhood, actually quite a few, um, that are really helping uh, improve the neighborhood. Uh, they. They look very nice within the neighborhood. They're not imposing on the old homes. Uh, so I think that this would really just help uh, Im best utilize what we have without disrupting uh, the other houses around us and, and just help increase the value of the, the whole neighborhood. So thank you. Any questions for the petitioner at this point? Mr. Opek? Why the, I, I know that probably the answer, but I just figured I'd ask. Um, did, did you ever look at just not having the two-car garage attached and having it detached so that you wouldn't have the worry about this setback? Yeah, that's something that actually this was the most difficult part of coming up with the design. Um, getting the two-car garage detached, our neighbor right across the street has something that Patrick built very similar to that or the garage is detached in the back. The two issues there is, again, because we're kind of on a compressed lot in the back, I could see us crashing our cars into the back of the house, trying to fit it in um, to actually utilize a two-car garage space. So I guess it would be more of one-car garage plus storage, practically. Um, and then also that did put some limitation on what we'd be able to put in terms of living space, having that little bit of extra room above the garage really helped open things up a lot in terms of the floor plan and just the amount of space that we have. And right now we have one son, he's in the back, but as we hope to expand our family, you know, that extra space will really help. And I think that would really help any family that moved in there. If I can add to, to, to your question, if you can sort of in your mind imagine turning the garage and facing it towards the street, the, the, the home itself actually almost completely cuts off that second car. And uh, obviously with the way the setbacks are, the way the easement is, uh, with the six foot easement, it even brings the garage closer to the house. So it's, it would be almost impossible to get a car in there. Yes, sir. I think even a detached garage, you still have a setback issue with a detached garage here where that 35 foot comes into play. I think you still have a nine foot issue. So I think detaching it doesn't really solve anything. Yes, ma'am. I just have a question about the width of the driveway. It's 10 feet, and then you've got that garage. I mean, what kind of car can you get a pickup truck in that garage? I mean, <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe not a very large pickup truck, um, but I think you could get. A fair number of reasonable sized cars including mid to maybe even large size SUVs. One thing we'd like to do is maybe extend the driveway just a little bit on the back so that there's room to maybe um, I guess you could say come out and turn around and then go it out forward in the driveway. 
Uh, again, like I said, there's a couple of houses that have done this um, in Royal Oak, and they have a very similar amount of space on their driveway, and it, it seems to work for them. And I notice they do have SUVs, but they do have that little extra piece of driveway just beyond the garage so they can turn their car and then come out forward. It passes the Yukon test. <laughs> I know that. Um, Curtis. So, by the way, that's behind Jim's Frosty Treats on Wilson and Eleven Mile. Correct. Yeah, yes. and I've been a regular for years. Uh, the um, home across the street, I think, Patrick, you guys built, right? Yeah. And and it's a smaller f footprint then with the because Mr. Clark mentioned the. Uh, Detaching the garage still has a variance request. I, I don't know if 2220 Barrett had a variance request to build that home. You have any recollection? Uh, 2220 did not have a variance request. Why that is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. that I think they they have a shorter front yard, so Do, they have yeah. more back. Yeah, and, and you mentioned this about the sense of how, so you're, you're saying at the other end of the block, the houses are tighter. Front yeah, yards. as you drive up, you can actually kind of yeah. see the line yeah. going. Like our neighbor across the street um, that Patrick built their home, their right. yard, I wouldn't say is half as long as ours, but it's very yeah. close. Yeah. So that's, I, in my recollection, that would probably be why there was no variance mm. needed. Right. Mm, makes sense. Interesting. Okay. Any other questions for the petitioners? I'm not seeing any. I'm going to ask you folks to take a seat real quickly so I can open up yep. the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to address the board on this issue? Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Frances Tyrell. I live at 2201 Barrett Avenue, just a few houses down. Uh, the reason I'd like to uh, list my objections to the variances listed here, and it has nothing to do with, I, these are lovely neighbors, I just live a few doors down. I never heard about this until just recently when I got the notice in the mail. Um, but the first reason is uh, the variance for um, 16 feet of the minimum required rear setback of 35 feet. This is a much larger house than, of course, exists in our neighborhood right now. It's very similar to the one across the street. Uh, anytime you remove permeable ground, we lose a little <coughs> bit more surface area for water to permeate the ground, and it adds to flooding issues in Royal Oak. I realize it's just a little bit, but I, that is a concern of mine. <coughs> Uh, the second reason that I have is, uh, and I'm going to use the word notorious here for Hilton, for um, Helen Homes. To me, they're notorious in my neighborhood for starting projects and leaving them unfinished and unoccupied for months and even years. Uh, these homes have become eyesores in my neighborhood. The one across, uh, right around the block from me is still sitting there unfinished with a stinking portage on, just inches from the sidewalk. The dumpster has been removed, but there's still an open lot with tons of debris laying around. And that was the condition of the house across the street for several months. It, it just sat there unfinished for months and months and months, almost um, two years, actually. Uh, and then my third reason is that these homes, we live in a neighborhood of very affordable homes. I'm a widow. I'm on Social Security. Many of my neighbors are people with disabilities, single family, pa um, single parent families, veterans, retired people. Our, the demographics of Royal Oak is getting squeezed to the point where affordable housing is becoming non-existent. And that's my third and final objection to the variances for uh, a large hill and homes in our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. We'll get to you in a minute, sir. Anybody else? All right, not seeing anybody, I will go ahead and close the public hearing. We'll bring it back to this side of the table. Why don't you folks come back up in case we do have any questions. I just wanted to respond to my notoriety here. Uh, we do not have another project on Barrett presently. So. No, around the block on Dallas. Uh, yeah, we do. Dallas is, uh, Dallas is delivering in 32 days. That home has been under construction for six and a half months. No, no, I'm sorry, eight and a half months. So I don't know about years or it being a cesspool, but I'll certainly look into it. All right, being back on this side of the table, Mr. Clatt. And just one thing to point out, too. It is a larger home, I agree, but we don't have any lot coverage issues. That's correct, right? There's no lot coverage issue?
Anybody? I just will say that I'm having trouble with that back 16 feet. I I would much have rather have looked at something that was was able to come forward a little bit. I would have been way more comfortable than that than granting this just because it's this huge, massive monolith that's going to block other people's backyard visuals. I mean, it just, it's, it's I like the house. I wish there was more land back there. Me too. Um, <laughs> so I don't think I'll be supporting this for that reason. At this point, there's nothing to support. There's no motion oh, on I the know. table, well, so. Okay. Can I go. also point out uh, that the, uh, a portion of that is above the garage and not just below the garage. So we're trying to divide that space up so that we don't have that bowling alley effect that you're right. referring to. Mr. Clark, yeah. is there any consideration to bring the home forward? I mean, I think the, the front yard is really the heart, well, is a hardship here. We'd love to. I was just trying to do the less of two evil variances, and instead of imposing the house more on the street, I wanted to keep it in line so we weren't sort of sticking out more, so we decided to go back. But if, uh, if we're into granting other variances, I'd love to go forward. That would be up to the, obviously, the Shillers if they want to be pronounced over their neighbors or not. Mr. Opeck. Uh, unfortunately, I have a feeling that would cause them to have to come back before us again because that would be granted excess of what's already in front of us. So, and as much I, as we. And I think they made the right choice keeping the houses in line, so. Very um, to my concern, I actually feel bad, not, well, for them for the time being, unless they don't really care, I feel bad fact that there's no backyard at all with that garage I almost want to say I, I don't mind it attached if it was the one or one and a half and it was perpendicular to it I'm, I'm just concerned about there uh, uh, not being a backyard I mean at least if that was there turned perpendicular I'm all right with that much sticking past but anybody prepared to offer a motion at this point I will. Yes, sir. I'll, I I move to approve these uh, variances as presented. Mm. Motion. Oh. I, th I think there's only one variance that's being asked for. Yeah, I was going to address oh, that. Oh, sorry. Oh, yes, you're right. <laughs> yeah, sorry. sorry. I forgot that the one we got removed. I, administratively, how we need to handle that, so. <laughs> I, I will amend my motion so that it is only for the one variance that is still before us. So, Ms. Sherhart, are you comfortable with the verbal interchange in terms of the builder agreeing to lower the height of the garage so that we're only dealing with one variance? Yes. Okay. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? I shall support. All right. Four. Yes, sir. Four is yours. Uh, I think it's, it's, it is a, a difficult position to be in with that front yard, and I do agree that uh, I, I would prefer that they would build into the backyard so that you're preserving that that front yard look throughout the street. I think that is part of the appeal of the of the street. You know, I've I, I've walked the neighborhoods a lot around here, and there are some houses that you know go a little further into the front yard, and it just looks odd to me. Um, so by going into the backyard, I think that's as as the petitioner said, the lesser of two evils. So uh, for that reason, I'm in support of it. Any other discussion? Yes, sir. Uh, I think they do have a hardship that they can't help in that. This is a um, small lot. Um, they are keeping their footprint smaller uh, by a thousand, I think it said, a little over a thousand. Um, I am still concerned about the fact they're not giving themselves any any backyard at all. So even if we grant this, maybe they'll relook at how they're doing that garage so they give themselves a little bit of a backyard. But I I am concerned about that, but I, I do think their house will enhance the neighborhood by having a newer, nicer looking house, having having more amenities to it. Um, the garage is just the concern of future owner of whether or not they want something with no backyard. I mean, I'll be supporting this motion. The reality is, given the size of this lot, I wouldn't have been shocked if they came in front of us asking for six variances, you know, height variances, lot coverage variances, you know. So given the size of the lot, I think that they're <coughs> making a very reasonable request. I mean, I've, I've heard some of the concerns, but the reality is they are homeowners, they have property rights, and if they want to bulldoze their current house and build a new house, that is certainly their prerogative. And 
again, what they're asking for, all things considered, I think is absolutely reasonable. Anybody else? Not saying any. I will call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Motion passes. You're all set. Thank you. All right, and we are going to take a quick five minute break here. Cookie break. Cookie break, exactly, for anybody who hasn't got a cookie yet. Yeah. Cookie break. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, oh, okay. So we only got three. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting back to order. 
We will move along to D5 of new business, case number 190725, public hearing on the appeal of Patrick Slayton, petitioner and owner for the following variance. Weigh 549 square feet of the maximum allowable accessory structure ground floor area of 800 <coughs> square feet to permit the construction of a det detached accessory structure studio located at 432 Mount Vernon, Commissioner Hart. All right, so the property is located on Mount Vernon Boulevard. That's uh, west of Main Street, north of 13 Mile neighborhood. The property is zoned... Um, one family residential large lot and I believe the well, of course I don't have it right in front of me the lot is 21,875 square feet so the request before you is um, to exceed that 800 square foot maximum um, total uh, square footage for accessory structure on the property the home presently has a um, attached garage and what is proposed is a detached accessory structure to house a studio, art studio of some kind for the applicant. Um, he reports that there will be no sort of, um, you know, direct sales happening at, or any customers coming to the home. So we're not in the territory of home occupation or a use variance. Um, instead, it is a request um, just to exceed um, that 800 square foot um, maximum square footage for an accessory structure. Um, so this is the existing home uh, from the street. And let me scroll down to a site plan here. So you can see the lot is quite deep, um, 250 square feet deep. And the proposed structure will be lo located in the northwest corner here. Um, so uh, the lot coverage of um, the site um, will not exceed 30%. And additionally, um, adding this accessory structure um, would only take the, you know, there's the 10% rule where a garage can be 10% of um, the total lot area, but not to exceed 800 square feet. Um, so it's only at 6.2% here, but given that 800 square foot rule, um, they're before you today. So, um, so the variance is to construct a 728 square foot uh, attached accessory structure um, and retain the existing 621 square foot attached accessory structure. And so the variance request is uh, for 549 square feet. Any questions for staff at this point? Not seeing any. Is the petitioner present? Hi, my name is Patrick Slayton. I'm the petitioner for 432 Mount Vernon Boulevard. Um, I'm a rail up resident. Actually, I'm two years today. I've moved into that house. So I've living here for two years, but I've lived in the Detroit area my whole life. Um, so Royal Oak is home to many different artists, myself being one of them. I have a BFA in art direction from the Center for Creative Studies. Um, I've been professionally employed as a creative for over 25 years, and I create many different things from photography and videos and painting and sculpture. I restore some old scooters, some old cars, uh, some of which are like actually really good. And I currently work in downtown at the, um, the Howard Building at the Dassault Systems. Um, so I would like to a variance to construct an art studio workshop so I can create and still park our cars in the garage. As you know, Mount Vernon is a dirt road. Sometimes in my projects, I've been working in, the, in that garage. Sometimes my projects spill out into the driveway. So I get all the dirt from the road coming up and covering everything every single day. So I have a nice uh, wash any time card at Paul's car wash. Um, but it really creates a problem for some of the stuff that I work on. So if you're working on a, a nice table or something like that, you have to do extra work to, to deal with that. Also, um, if I get spilled out into the garage and I'm working out in the sun, um, I've had skin cancer seven times on my face. 
so I can want to do whatever I can to keep out of that sum. Um, so that's that's basically it. Um, Juliana went through everything. Um, there's some precedents um, with some other properties in the uh, in the neighborhood where they have um, very large lots. I mean, so these are all my neighbors. I actually had 414 Martin Fernan. Uh, there's a three-car attached garage with an accessory building. His house is probably 4,000 square feet, and I know that garage has a basement and two stories above that. Um, right across the street, um, my neighbor has a 1,000 square foot two-story garage with a, uh, another existing garage on his house. And at 405 Mount Vernon, two-car attached garage and two-car accessory building. I know the, that those precedents don't have any weight to anything, but it it is there. They're all there. So, Any questions for the petitioner? Yes, Start sir. with Mr. Clatt, then Ms. Anderson. Now, did you reach out to any of your neighbors? You mentioned some of their homes. Did you reach out to them? Oh, yeah, I talk to all my neighbors all the time. And then they're all, yeah, they're fine. They don't really care. You know, they're like, start telling me about their, their art projects and, because I got sucked into two hour conversation about an old camera. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Anderson. Thank you. Well, I, I think, and I could be wrong because it's been a while since something like this came up, but were you planning on putting plumbing in? No. Okay. Because no when, you, when you're talking about art and maybe painting and crafts or whatever, I thought maybe you'd need Water. a sink or something. So. With the accessory structures like this, they're, you're not allowed to have water. Right. You can have heat and all yeah, that. Yeah, no, there'd be no plumbing. I okay. would probably at some point run a gas line out there so I could have heat and work in the uh, wintertime. But other than that, um, okay. no, no I plumbing. I just wondered just... If, you, if you knew that. So it seems like you know that, so that's yeah, I what I was wondering. Okay. Julie told me. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, not seeing any. I'm going to ask you just to take a seat real quickly, if you would, sir, and we'll open up the public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to address the board on this issue? Not seeing anybody. I will go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to the side of the table. Mr. Ofak? No, you had your hand. I'll let you go first. No, I, Ms. Zukin? I would uh, move to grant this variance. Um, I'm familiar with that neighborhood. I've played volleyball in some of the yards where they have sheds in the back that have kitchens and I mean, they're just really deep. There's basketball courts, there's all kinds of stuff going on. I think this design is really attractive. Um, nobody's going to see it. These are excessively deep lots and I don't, I don't see a problem with it. I'll support. Oh dear, did we get a second? We get support. We yeah. just did. I, I, always just support I, always do that. I don't want support. I'll go on my own. You're all alone. <laughs> um, I think the hardship here is the fact that it's such another oversized lot. I mean, 21,000 square feet. Man, I wish I had a lot that big. Uh, so I think that's, that's the hardship that they have uh, in doing this. Other than that, yeah, they can do this stuff as it is, but... Uh, this will probably help them better. Mr. Kroll and Mr. Clyde. Yeah, I, I'm in support of this. I, I, I certainly the yard is large enough to support it, and uh, nobody really knows what goes on back there anyway. You, you really can't see the backyards from any, any point. Um, so I think it certainly fits. Mr. Clyde. All great points. I'll just commend you on the design and the presentation. Great job. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else? All right, I will call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, there'll be a she shed out there, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let it get struck by lightning. Yeah. I'm going to say that. I didn't think anyone would get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving right along, D6, case number 190726, public hearing on the appeal of Sherilyn Carruthers, petitioner, and Ann McCullough, PTS development owner for the following variants. Wave 1,000 feet of the minimum required 1,000 feet distance from a school, religious institution, and licensed child care center to permit the establishment of a microblading, of microblading at a beauty salon, which is defined as an adult-oriented business located at 28978 Woodward Avenue, Mishar Hart. 
Yeah, so this is a fairly simple request. Um, the applicant operates a um, personal service spa, which includes um, eyelash extensions, makeup application, waxing and tanning services. They'd like to add microblading, which is um, considered uh, tattooing. It's the permanent um, you know, application of makeup um, or looking tattoos. And uh, our zoning ordinance does see microblading as the same thing as tattooing, given um, the license that is required by the state. The property is located in the general uh, business district, which does allow an adult-oriented business as a um, special land use. So the applicant did receive that approval from the Planning Commission uh, two nights ago. The one variance in front of you today regards the buffering distance from um, the sensitive uses um, next to it, such as school, religious institution, licensed child care center. Um, as you can see and probably are familiar, this is the shrine of the Little Flower School, and then across the street is the church. So um, they are requesting the full waiver of that 1,000-foot buffer today. And I believe that's it. Any questions for staff at this point? I have a question. Yes, sir. So that adult uses ordinance, if we were to grant this variance, it would not allow the other adult uses in the list of that ordinance. It would just allow microblading. It's really a rhetorical question. Well, just wanted to point that out. That was really granted by the Planning Commission yesterday, but I believe it is specific. That came up at maybe two meetings ago with um, the massage use and it is um, specific to one type of adult-oriented business. Any other questions? Is the petitioner present? Please come forward. I am Sherilyn Carruthers, and I own Selfish on Woodward. And this is my husband, Earl Carruthers. All right. Tell us about your plan. Um, yeah, so I've own Selfish for three years. I was on 4th Street for two years, and I've been at this location for one. Um, was working by myself um, at the previous location. I have um, grown into this location. Bless you. Bless you. Um, and now I have more girls working with me, and I would like to offer more services, and microblading is huge, especially since I do specialize in eyelash extensions. It kind of goes hand in hand. Um, so, yeah. That's about it. I'd just like to be able to add that service to my salon. Thank you. Any questions for the petitioner at this point? All right, not seeing any. If you folks want to take a seat real quickly, I'll open up the public hearing. I have a feeling it's going to be kind of short. Thank you. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to address the board on this issue? Not seeing anybody, I will go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to this side of the table. Mr. Kroll? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve this. We have a motion? I'll, I'll support. support. Oh. We have seconds all over the place. I we have seconds, Zuki. thirds. Do I have a fourth? I heard Ms. Zuki first, so Ms. we'll Zuki. go with her. Mr. Kroll? Um, I don't know how many of these we have to approve before we, they change the ruling. I, I, I think that um, comparing microblading and tattoo is, is kind of a stretch. And we have a church or a school within a thousand yards of everything. So um, I... I it seems to be um, something that's, I, I'm wondering if other cities have the same approach that we do to microblading, because I, um, that'd be interesting. But I, I, I know of it, we've, we've sat through a couple other presentations, so uh, um, I'm quite comfortable that that's a new profession that we should learn to deal with. Ms. Zuckin, any follow up? I, I agree, and I would just add that this is an existing business, and the other ones we've granted weren't existing businesses at the time. Mm -hmm. And this is just another service she's adding, so I don't see a problem. Right. Anybody else? All right, we'll make this quick and easy. I'll call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. All right, so that takes us to. Catch up on my computer here. Got we already handled D7, so we will move right along to D8, case number 190728, public hearing on the appeal of Parent Avenue Properties LLC petitioner and owner for the following variances A, wave six of the maximum allowable 12 dwelling units, 
B waive 10 foot of the maximum allowable height of 30 feet to permit construction of a four story 18 unit multiple family building to be located at 127 through 207 West Parent. And we're back to Mr. Murphy. Musical chairs. That's your contract sign. Three. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last one was pretty easy. It's like four and a half. Yeah, I wouldn't count that up for one. This site is comprised of three single-family lots on West Parent. The petitioner is proposing to demolish all the structures on site, combine the site, and build a four-story, 18-unit multifamily building. In conversation with the petitioner uh, during the design process, we had discussed the allowable number of units. Based on the lot size, the ordinance, the current ordinance provisions would only allow for six residential units on the site. The planning commission has the ability to grant up to twice that number, uh, which they did do at Tuesday night's planning commission meeting. Uh, the petitioner is seeking the opportunity to go above and beyond that requirement, which the planning commission does not have the discretion to uh, to go above and beyond 100% density bonus or 12 units. They're seeking the opportunity to go further and have 18. So they've applied for a variance in order to do that, and that was one of the recommended contingencies uh, from our office to the board, is if, if they approve it, that the petitioner come before you as they did today. Uh, the petitioner did, uh, knowing that, did apply, and staff worked with them to expedite their application process to have it in front of you two days later. So the Petitioner's building is 40 feet in height. The zoning ordinance does have provisions which allow it to go higher and allow the Planning Commission discretion to allow the building to be taller than 30 feet if it meets some particular provisions which it was unable to from its original design. So that was included as a contingency should the Planning Commission approve the design as is, which they did. So the design measures the height at the parapet wall of the building, which is 40 feet and the petitioner is requesting the variance of that difference from 30, 10 feet, in order to accomplish what the Planning Commission did approve. Planning Commission approved it on Tuesday night with the contingencies that were identified in staff's report, which include these variance requests, which is why they applied to come in front of you today. They, they added some additional contingencies, which are not directly relevant to what you're considering today, but we will ensure that those contingencies are put in place when they bring in drawings for building permits and engineering permits. You've got some drawings in front of you which illustrate the, uh, the site itself, how the building is laid out on the property, the access to the parking on the ground floor off the alley to the rear of the building, as well as the floor plans which illustrate the number of units per floor. And the petitioner can have a conversation with you as to why they feel they need the additional height of the building and the additional number of units in excess of what the Planning Commission has, has the ability to grant. Um, Any questions for Mr. Murphy, Mr. Pearl? So, I understand the ten percent height. What constitutes the other variance? I mean, why, why can they only have six instead of eighteen? Is it lot lines? Is it density? Is I mean, what? Yes, there are some density provisions in this particular zoning district, which is mixed use too. Um, the ordinance allows for the permitted number of units based on the lot size, which in this particular case is six. Another provision in that ordinance says that if somebody comes in front of the Planning Commission for site plan approval, they have some discretionary um, criteria that they can utilize in order to grant them up to a 100% bonus, density bonus, meaning in this case, the Planning Commission could grant them up to 12 units, which they did, and the petitioner is looking to go up in excess of 12 units. So the Planning Commission said, if you want to go in excess of 12 units, the 18 requested, you would need to seek the variance and get the variance approved from the board in front of you, the ZBA today. So 12 units is, is allowed, but to go above and beyond that, this board would have to grant the variance request. Any other questions? I'm not seeing any. I see the petitioner's presence, so please come forward, sir. 
Good evening. John Morosic, Morosic Architecture, the architect for the project. Anything you want to add to what Mr. Absolutely. Said? Oh, okay. Please, um, <laughs> um, well, first off, we did have a, um, a community meeting um, at Jim Brady's, and uh, we invited everybody um, within the 300 foot to come. Um, not everyone came, but uh, we did have some pretty good positive impact. And we did um, have a presentation, a video. I, we were able to have a video presentation on your system, but we did have a drive around, and like, so we got a little more sense of the, uh, how the building works. But, you know, for the most part, what we, uh, um, uh, the issue of the height became, um, uh, let me just focus on that for a second. Right now, the building, um, and you uh, might be able to pull up some figures, I don't have it right with me right now, but the, uh, the zero lot line is for the garage. And if we were to go to the, the actual building itself, I think we're, what, uh, 26, 27 feet from the back? Mike, could anyone help me on that one right here? Well, all right, let's just say it's short of, 20, it's short of 30 feet to the, to the rear to the, of the larger um, uh, scale building. It's, we're about 27, I think, or something like that. I, I can't, I didn't have my figures with me. I had them last night, or the Tuesday. But nonetheless, the point of view is that if we didn't have that garage portion of the building, and we were to set back the building 30 feet, which would be in excess of, um, uh, 20 feet in excess of the 10 that's minimally required, if you do the math, we could have a 40-foot building. Okay, so that, that but, but we, um, as a, the developer and the architect, we wanted to have enclosed parking. And uh, it's amenity value. We also, for the, for the residents, for the people who are gonna be purchasing these um, condominiums, we are intending to have a luxury high-end, high-scale, two-bedroom only. There's no studios, there's no uh, one-bedrooms. So we are, are in parking access of the required two, I think we're at three over. So to the degree that we thought, well, all right, we could go the 30 feet, which we still could, if it is determined as such, but we would like to have that enclosed garage. That enclosed garage is gonna be mechanically vented up through the top of the, um, the um, four story portion of the building. So there's not gonna be any openings to that. We feel that uh, having that, um, provides an amenity value to the, to the neighborhood. We are um, improving, uh, proposing to improve entirely the alley portion that's right behind the uh, building. Uh, it serves us because it's all broken up and we need to have a nice drive for the people here. So we feel that we're taking the um, driveways off the main street. We're putting the parking, directing it to the rear. We're enclosing it. So that's one of the reasons why we wanted to have that enclosed parking. If we were to set the building back from the rear 20 feet or 30 feet, as I mentioned, and we were to be allowed the 40 foot height, um, I think by virtue of the, the math, then we would have exposed parking in the rear. And we might put a screen wall around it. But anyway, what we're saying is that we're providing an amenity feature that we believe is of value. We believe that the, the particular project was designed to be a kind of a, um, transitionary development between the main streets where there's more density and that brings in mind why we're asking for the additional density because it doesn't I know that this isn't necessarily a, a, um, a reason for the um, for the variance but it's a reason for what we're, what we're doing here the uh, the economics don't justify the development of a lower density development between the two main streets and at maybe at some point in time in the future it will um, but right now it doesn't. So in order for us to proceed with the project, the additional six units is what's necessary for us. Again, that's not a hardship necessarily, so I understand that we're not pushing that issue here, but to the degree that we believe that we've developed a design that is a, a kind of a compatible urban transitionary development between two major, uh, more dense elements, we like to look at it as something like in Toronto, Yorkville, or in Chicago, or New York, and the more, um, let's say, um, brownstone walk-up type. We specifically spent time in developing a walk-up portion of it, so only three units have a direct walk-up, but the illusion is that it's a brownstone development, and we feel that that kind of helps to um, enhance the walkable city um, intention of the master plan, and we believe that this could be um, a precedent-setting development for the areas between the main streets. 
Uh, right now, I don't believe there are any really developments in the Main Street area between the Main Street developments. So um, we are doing a green roof, um, and we are going to be uh, working with a sustainable engineering firm in order to facilitate how that um, the stormwater would be um, uh, less of a retention. That was a big issue of discussion. Both the mayor and the, um, the head of the, plan, uh, the planning commission uh, made a big deal about that. I wasn't actually um, considering that to be a big issue because we were planning to do it in any way, but I'm not an engineer, so I couldn't necessarily speak to the specifics of it. Uh, another issue was that we're a few trees short. Uh, we'll facilitate those in the plan. What we do believe here is that we are incompatible with um, the intent of the master plan, the intent of the further development of Royal Oak, and this could be a precedent setting proje project for that type of uh, involvement. So that's, uh, that's my case, and I'll answer your questions. Right. Any questions for the petitioner at this point? Yes, sir. Uh, just one question. Did you consider any other ways to reduce the height of the bulk? Like, for example, you could take that fourth floor and step it back, maybe 10 feet, create a balcony up front. Is there, it's one way to help reduce it so it doesn't visually appear to be as high from the street. Did you consider options like that? Yes, we did. And um, again, we also considered underground parking <laughs> as, as an option. I mean, we really did roll it all over the place as far as trying to facilitate that. Uh, I know that in the city of Birmingham, um, after a certain height, they do require a setback. Um, in this particular case, it's not required as a setback. I know that that does facilitate the, what you're talking about, that along the street face is a three-story. Um, we did consider it, but we didn't implement it. Any other questions? I guess yes, I'd say why. Why didn't you want to implement those considerations? I don't have a really great, good reason for that. <laughs> we just didn't. You know, we, we, we did look at it, but we didn't. I mean, um, I, 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 I don't want to flub on that. Um, I don't have a good answer for that. Okay. Yeah, I guess it would shrink your units down quite a bit. You'd lose 10 feet, give or take out of the units. Maybe there'd be one bedroom at that point, at least on that fourth floor. Or we would um, reduce the amount of units on that upper floor. Sure. And, 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 um, and uh, provide a walkout terrace. There, there is an additional amenity value for that, and you're aware of that as well, is that the upper floor that had a walkout terrace recessed back 10 feet. Here I'm talking myself into an alternative solution. Okay. Um, <laughs> but nonetheless, that, I mean, that, that is of, of, of a consideration. Yes, it is a consideration. Mr. Kroll. Why 18 units? Well, um, we have um, six units per floor. And they're all two bedroom. They're basically the same floor plan layout, except uh, the outer ones have, you know, windows um, to the outside. And so we're just layering it one level more. That's what we did. That's how we came about. Very simple. Well, I, I think what he meant was, why was twelve not good enough? Oh, uh, well, I think that was what I brought up earlier. Is that the economics of twelve? Um, you know, again, the, 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 the one reason why the main streets are being developed is because you are allowed more density, you see. So consequently, the uh, land value and, and the cost of the, of the building and, and the return um, justify that uh, uh, percentage of what is the industry standard. Here, um, six um, definitely doesn't work. Twelve is, you know, well, give me an example here, just as a little historical. Uh, Jason Priestcorn, who owns the site, he owns the three buildings, who couldn't be here tonight, um, bought those three sites with the in, you know, intent of developing them. Um, he tried to work with um, partner with developers who looked at it and decided, no, it's, it's not going to work. You know, I mean, everyone has their comfort zone. Um, he approached me and, and another person, and I tried to bring in developers. Say, look, I, I, this is what we can do here. And they walked from it. I mean, I'm just saying there's a certain level of, of reality to that. So I convinced him to self-develop it, okay, uh, meaning he develops it. Now, he owns the land. He, the, it's a certain urban economic value there. He owns the land. If he were to sell it, then, then people would have to assume that cost 
as a part of the overall project cost. Now, he has assumed that cost as a part of his return benefit. So instead of him selling it, he's able to sell it, and then with the additional units, actually gain the return that a, a regular developer wouldn't, would just walk away from. And that's why I'm saying, from my perspective, in an urban development perspective manner, the time is not there yet for those middle areas to have the uh, economic justification be built up. They will, at some point in time, I know that they are in Birmingham, you know, because that, that's the case. I think it's growing here in Royal Oak, and it will certainly, at some point in time, hit that. But right now, it's not there. Mr. Alpeck. Well, I mean, like, for hardship-wise, financial is not a hardship. I understand it, that. That's why I just brought it up as a statement. I'm not using it as, okay. a, as a condition at all. I'm just saying that that's the reason why. So what's the hardship of not using 12 units in instead of going to 18. It's not economically feasible. And you know, again, I know that's not a justification, but it just isn't economically feasible. Ms. Anderson. Wasn't this all taken into consideration from the get-go, though? Pardon? Wasn't this all taken into consideration from the beginning? Not I'm sure with there this was gentleman, some, not with this fellow. Well, okay. Well, I, I, my difficulty is that it's right across the street from a bunch of single-family homes, and it's really high, and it's really dense. And you may say that it's, oh, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump away from downtown, but at the same time, our residential neighborhoods are just a hop, skip, and a jump away from downtown. I understand that. And again, you're, um, you're stating valid facts from one perspective. Um, during that meeting um, at Jim Brady's, those people asked if Mr. Prescorn would buy their houses <laughs> to do a development. So I'm just, I'm just, that's another reality, you know, so. Yes, ma'am. These are going to be individually sold condos or this whole thing yes, is a rental? Yes, the condominium is not rentals. You know, see, the issue here is that, you know, I, I agree with you. Uh, he uh, is not a, let's say, seasoned developer. He's someone who saw an opportunity, oh, look, I'll buy these houses, I'll rent them, and at some point in time I'll develop something. Oh, I don't know how to develop, so I will try to partner with somebody. And he did try to partner with somebody, and nothing happened because it wasn't economically feasible. So then, like I said, I convinced him to try to do it on his own, which he was able to do, and so now that's where we are. So it is upscale luxury condominiums. If you're familiar with some of the developments, I'm sure you all are, actually, much more than I am, that um, there's a good return opportunity uh, that exists right now. There, these are 15 to 1,600 square feet. And um, again, with some of the, uh, the amenity values, we've worked into them, enclosed parking, mechanically um, vented and heated as well as another factor. Uh, we have a green roof, both on the upper level as well as over the garage. Um, you know, it, uh, there's advanced security opportunities. We feel that we'll be providing a, actually a product that's a lot different than it's being available right now. I mean, you have to have a bigger mousetrap in Royal Oak, and this is one. Mr. Curtis. Would the petitioner consider uh, Mr. Klatt's suggestion of bringing back that, uh, what is the fourth level off the street and reducing the number of units on that top level, say, to 15? I mean, so three up there, so a total of 15 rather than eight, reduces the impact of the height um, and reduces the request for uh, six additional units. Do you think the petitioner would consider that? Yes, I believe you would. I'll convince him of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think he would. Okay, I mean, you know, we're here to make the best value of the project. And I think that um, I, I see the amenity value of a terrace. And I think that um, you know it would work. So if that became a, an opportunity for us to proceed, I certainly would uh, convince him of that. And I don't think he would be, be a hard sell. Yes, sir. So do we know if the Planning Commission had any concern regarding the height? Or assume they approved it. Was it unanimous approval? Do they have any concerns about the height? Or was it more about green roofs and stormwater management? There was a fair amount of focus on their added contingencies. Uh, if they had a concern with the height, then they would have conveyed that, uh, 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 I'll say a strong concern that they would sure. have conveyed that and told the petitioner to revise the drawings prior to coming to seek the variances from you or come with a different design. They, they made no 
mention of that in any of their contingencies. Actually, I was quite amazed that they did make a big deal about it. I mean, I, I, I was prepared, like I am now, to speak of a lot of, you know, conditions about why we were doing it, which you actually asked me, but um, they, they just mentioned the height um, as a part of their project overview. Um, they didn't mention the density at all, okay, which I was also quite surprised. Um, but they bore it. They went into that groundwater, no flooding basements in Bur and Royal Oak, which again we're perfectly willing with ground swales, green design. That's something that we we were going to work into the project anyway. Mr. Prescorn is a roofing contractor, and uh, in, a mo in some ways we were going to use this as a, as a prototype so he could <laughs> sell uh, another opportunity for him to go forward and and make this type of um, building um, roof another uh, profit center for himself. So we were actually going to do a little bit of experimentation on that level. All right, any other questions for the petitioner? Not seeing any, we're going to just ask you to take a seat real quickly and see if these two folks want to speak on this issue. Thank you for your patience this evening. We appreciate that. No problem. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, my name is John Bonar, and this is my wife Diana. Uh, we live at uh, 206 West Kenilworth. Uh, we've been residents, residents there for uh, over 38 years, so we've seen a lot of changes, obviously, in Royal Oak over those years. <clears throat> we watched the uh, Main Street Square go up uh, right across the street from us over 20, probably 25 years, 26 years ago. And that development is probably about 30, 35 feet high, I believe. Um, we have a couple issues, obviously, with the variances that are being uh, asked for by the applicant. Um, we don't believe the variances requested are warranted. As was stated, the um, three lots that the uh, owner owns uh, allow only uh, two units per lot, so that's the six lots that were uh, available, or six units that were available. The Planning Commission did grant the 100% as far as we know, so that's the 12. And now they're asking for another six, which in essence is a 200% increase in the density from the original six. Um, We believe that uh, keeping it at 12 would not unreasonably prevent the owner from using the property for the permitted purposes if we kept it at 12. With the increased density, it's also requiring that building to be constructed right on the property line in the back, which is abutting right out. We're, we're the first home um, on the west side of that uh, proposed construction. So that uh, lot line, where that garage would be is right on that property line, which is only an 18-foot alley. So 18 feet will be separating us from a 40-foot building, even though there's a green space supposedly of 20 or 25 feet before the building starts up. It's still all attached in one building. Um, <clears throat> we believe that that is required because they need the additional parking to support the six additional units. That's why they're building, that's why they're pushing that right to the lot line. Our concern with that, we believe that this will pre uh, prevent or present a safety issue because all the traffic that would be coming in and out of that project is only accessible by that only an 18 foot alley. There's two 20 foot um, garage doors on the back, and our concern is that that alley is not opened all the way through to Main Street. It is blocked right by um, Jim Brady's and the uh, main floor covering, which will result in all the traffic having to come. It won't be a one-way alley. It'll have to be a two-way alley, and we're just wondering what the ramifications will be of, of having traffic, cross traffic, two-way traffic within only an 18 foot confined uh, alleyway back there. And we're concerned about snow removal, ice, um, and just
being able to, with larger vehicles today and SUVs, somebody coming out one end, somebody coming in the other, um, we're concerned about what that would in include. <clears throat> and concerning the height, uh, actually it's 40 feet, there's a two and a half foot parapet on top, so it's gonna be 42 and a half feet. And we're gonna be sitting in, in our backyard, which we now look at and see some trees in that and green space. We're gonna be staring at a 40 foot building coming right up behind us. And we already have a, a 30 foot um, building in front of us. And we're just wondering if putting a 40 foot building there will set a precedent of allowing these larger structures to be constructed in the, in the um, uh, neighborhood areas. I can see it going down the uh, main corridors and that, having higher buildings and that, but I would try to keep everything at the 30 foot level within the uh, uh, residential areas. So <clears throat> we don't believe that the added density is warranted in this situation. And uh, we don't really believe that there's been any hardship presented uh, other than the fact that the fourth story allows him to put six other units and uh, is enriching him at our expense. Uh, so when we looked at the... Um, Sir, I'm gonna need you to wrap up, please. Okay, so I'm finished. All right. I'm just a little concerned also because on the side of our alley, the west side, uh, it floods during a heavy rain. Um, so we don't get any flooding in our backyard, but our garage floods, the, back, the alley floods, and with more cement, I'm just really concerned that if our yard starts flooding, what recourse do we have? And um, I could see where with this, I mean, it's a beautiful project, um, and the gentlemen are wonderful gentlemen. Um, and it'll definitely, it would definitely improve the look of the place because right now it's a mess, um, these uh, three homes. But um, I do wanna say that with that being blocked down there, Everyone is coming, you've got 18, if you've got 18 units, you've got 36 cars coming in and out all day long on just one corner trying to, that's gonna cause a, a traffic backup. It has to be cleared out. If this is to go forward, it has to be cleared out so that it's a one way, so that people can have a straight thoroughfare out to Main Street. I mean, it doesn't even make sense to have just everybody coming out one side. There's, there's just not enough thoroughfare there. Thank you. Thank you both. Since there's nobody else in the audience, I will close the public hearing. Why don't you come back up, sir, in case we have any additional questions for you, Mr. Clatt? So that is a good point, though. It was a typical two-way drive is at least 20, 22 feet. To accommodate two-way traffic, we do require a minimum of 20 feet. 20 feet. Obviously, this being a platted alley at 18, sure. is not capable of making change to that. Mr. Olfak. I have some concerns, of course, with uh, definitely the height and being more residential. I do understand the density of long-term. This, I would think, fits in long-term-wise, and, yeah, it could start the ball rolling on a whole sorts of things. But right now, I might be the wrong height at, at the wrong location. Um, so I am concerned about that. Stepping it back and maybe doing 15 units instead of 18 might help it a little bit, but... Um, I definitely don't, don't like the height or the... Okay. Anybody else? Mr. Kroll? I know this property fairly well, having been one of uh, the Axford Inn's major in donors. Um, and, and a lot of things have been trying to be done with this space for a long time, and, and these three houses... Um, have had just about everybody living in them that nobody really wanted to be around, um, and, and it's been it's been kind of a cesspool on that street. I, to me, this becomes kind of a judgment call because we know. I mean, we just look at the cases coming in front of us now. The, everybody's saying the thousand to fifteen hundred more people living in our town, and we don't have room for one of them. So something's going to change if the, if those are true. Um, there, there is the economics of this and, and how many it takes to buy three houses and, and, and put up a structure and, and where's, where's the economics of that to, to be able to make it work. 
obviously, um, it hasn't, no one's really presented a plan that's worked before. So um, this is really one of the first real ones that I've seen. I've seen a variety of different things that propose, but I haven't really seen anybody lay it out. Um, I, I, I'm kind of leaning in, in favor of it, um, only because I, I think it would uh, enhance the neighborhood, even though I'd like to see it a little little lower, a little less dense. Um, but, but I think I'd still select this over what's there now. Well, I'll well, agree. Before we get too far into discussing for or against anything, there should be a motion on the table. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve it. We have a motion for Mr. Kroll. For discussion's sake, I'll support. All right. Did you want the floor also? No. Okay. Any other discussion? Ms. Anderson? Well, my concern is actually both of them, the height and the density. I think it's not the right location for that. I, if it does go through, I feel real sorry for the, the neighbors, the single-family homes that are there because that is a large structure to have to deal with. All of a sudden, after enjoying a you know regular neighborhood environment, regardless, I understand that maybe that wasn't those those three homes were probably in rental mode for quite some time. But we can't look back. I mean, you can find good renters too, Ellen, and they're not all bad. But um, I do feel that it's just not something that's right. And I think that twelve units are fine for that. And that's what our codes are saying. That's what we're looking at. I don't think we need to extend it to the extra six. Mr. Gavin? I'm leaning to not be in favor of this. I, the only hardship I've heard is financial. And the only way to, that, based on what the petitioner is saying, that seems to make this work financially is, is to increase the density. and. We already have a mechanism for this mixed-use area to increase that density, and it's been exercised by the Planning Commission. I just, it, I, I don't like it for the area, and I don't, I, I just don't like a financial hardship. It just doesn't sit right with me. So, yeah, I'm not making a case for a financial hardship. No, I, I know you're not. That's, it's just the only thing I've heard that that comes close. Ms. Robinson. I just want to think about what's good for Royal Oak, and I don't like the density here. That's it. Yeah, th th this is a tough one for me, and, and, and I, I, I won't be voting in favor of the motion. I'm usually pretty open-minded when it comes to these types of developments. I actually truly believe of the infill between Washington and Main Street is coming. I think it should happen. I think it's a good thing. I think the neighborhood as it sits right now, those three houses are in horrible shape that I don't have to tell these folks. I walked through that alley, you know, after I did there at Jim Brady's, and I wouldn't want to be back there after dark. You know, it's uh, you know, so something needs to happen here to to really spruce that neighborhood up and make it more presentable. And this is a beautiful project; make no bones about it. But I, I I think there's a good argument to be made that it can work with a 30 foot height, with the density bonus that the planning commission is in a position to grant. And I think it, this is just putting 10 pounds of sand into a five pound bag. And I think uh, we could probably work at a dozen. Uh, I was going to use a different analogy. Oh, yeah, keep maybe. keep them coming. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, may I, Mr. Curtis, I, I am struggling too because I think density will occur between Maine and Washington, and this is the sort of project that makes sense. However, it is stepping on all single family, you know, a lot of single family homes all the way around that, on both, you know, behind it, in front of it. So, um, my inclination is, as presented this evening, to not be in support of it. Do you, do you know what the percentage of renters on that block versus owners are? I am not specifically aware. I am aware of the fact that the house that's across the side alley is a rental, and that we can anticipate that yeah, at some point in time, the Presley being developed into a mixed-use development and that being acquired. 
you know, when, when I'm, I'm kind of getting at, I'm, I'm kind of showing a, a vision of what's going to be happening soon, okay? At some point in time, the Presley um, site's going to be developed in a very intense development. Um, this neighborhood is going to, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to push anybody out, We're, no, nor is anyone trying to. The fact is, is that that house to our side is going to be gone. Um, we have on one side the um, Jim Brady's restaurant, who obviously wants to have this development. He spoke out very uh, much during the meeting. Um, we know of uh, people across the street who want to sell. Okay, so all I'm saying is that I think people are, from one perspective, it's not a hardship. I'm just giving kind of a vision. People are anticipating the fact that this is coming, and they were going to probably take advantage of it and benefit. Now, again, that's not necessarily an issue by which you're going to make a judgment, but I think that this is one of these projects that could be sooner than later, you see? And so this might be not this year. This may be two years from now. They'll, you'll see something like this happening more. And part of the reason is, is that it's going to, that's the natural role of the development once the main streets are developed. So I'm just saying that from a larger perspective, 10,000 feet. Mr. Curtis, then Mr. Olfak. Well, I'd like to say out loud that renters have rights to live in homes, too. So it's irrelevant in my mind whether they're homeowners in these uh, buildings or renters in these buildings. It's important to recognize that people who do not own the home but yet pay good money to rent the home have equal housing rights in this regard. Secondly, I have an agree that it's coming. The question is, is this the right project for this particular space? And I would be more interested in trying to mitigate the height I impact, um, which would also lessen the density. So again, as proposed tonight, I, I won't be in support. Uh, Mr. Olfax and Mr. Clark. Uh, agreed. And if we look at some of the other infill projects that had came back to us in the last few months in this whole area between Maine and Washington, uh, south of uh, basically OCC, they were more in line with uh, the height requirements of 30 feet. This is the first one that's actually gone over. So that's why I said the only way I could be in any kind of form of favor of that is if the whole front uh, street side was removed, those three units. So it was more of a step back approach. That would be the only way I'd ever be in support of something higher than 30. Uh, Mr. Klein, I well, that's what I, I was saying. Is, is there any consideration to let the applicant, or possibly table this, let the applicant take a look at other ways to maybe step it back to reduce the density a bit, reduce the height a bit to some degree? I guess you know, my question for Mr. Murphy would be because this is a two-step process. I mean, they got site plan approval, so if they're going to alter the site plan, then they would theoretically have to go in front of the plan commission, and then any variances, like they would have to come in front of us with any variances that might be created by a new proposal in front of them. Isn't that correct? Correct. And I'm, I've heard comments uh, on this side of the table about stepping the building back on its north elevation, and I've heard it on its the same thing on the south. Mm -hmm. uh, I've also heard we've also heard from neighbors of stepping back from the south. So there doesn't seem to be any consensus from my gathering of what that design might look like. And the petitioner has presented what they've given you. Right. And, and at the end of the day, we're talking about height and we're talking about density. We're really not talking about design features, locations. I mean, that's a different body's purview. So I'm not sure we should be marching down that road, anyways. Well, let me just say, if I may, sure. I think that the what Mr. Platt put forth, and I think Mr. Alpac Alpac mentioned, is that you know a, a condition by which to look at this building is to reduce the visual impact of that height. Uh, and I, like I mentioned, I don't see that being a problem. I think that you know part of you know this is a you know let's just say it's a forefront design, and uh, you know, you're here giving us me, in particular, the um, uh, input to how it could be facilitated. So I think that um, we'd be more than willing to take consideration as a team um, participation your comments to how, how we can make it work. Yeah, I, I mean, the message that I would want to convey to you is, I mean, I think this is a beautiful building. I think, you know, that the infill, the density makes sense. And I don't want you to necessarily think, I don't think anybody here just wants to see it get poo-pooed. I think it just has to be more right-sized, but unfortunately we can't as a body sit here and redesign its setbacks, you know, that, that's, that's just not our purview. You're doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, so I, I guess, uh, did you have something you wanted to add? Just a, a little bit. There's a motion on the table. It, it'd be wise to act on that motion. I'm, I'm and and right then if the petitioner wants to come back with a revised drawing, uh, design, reduced building heights, setback, step back, units, what have you, staff can work with the petitioner to figure out what an approval process would be for that design concept that they bring back. Right, right. Yeah. All right, so we do have a motion on the table to approve. So all those in favor of the motion to approve, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Nay. Nay. So for a clean record, let's do a motion to deny. Okay, then can somebody introduce a... One quick question. If we totally deny it, then does that mean if the... They'd have to come back with a new variance for, like, say, 15 units and, say, 35 feet, Correct. Yes, they would. They would have. They wouldn't be able to come back with the exact same variance request. For twelve Correct. units. Okay. Well, for twelve, 12 units, units. have to come back. Right. Right. Twelve <laughs> units. They wouldn't have to come back. Can't we? So, can we Correct. adjourn it as opposed to deny it? Uh, from a from a legal standpoint and having a nice clean cut record, it's always advantageous to have a vote, a five affirmative votes in of some motion. So there, you, there was a motion on the table. It did not receive five votes. There should be an, an opposite motion that theoretically well, would unless, gain more than five votes. Unless we're going to adjourn it for a month, then, then there doesn't need to be any decision. We, we've turned down. There's really no way to adjourn it procedurally because at the end of the day, if he introduces something new, it's got to go through a whole new process. We're only looking at two things. We're looking at density. We're looking at height. He can't, if he comes back with different setbacks, different unit amounts, that's not going to be what we're looking at. And, you know, if there was any concern that I had that a motion to deny would mean we would not see this gentleman for a year, then I would not want to see that happen because I think we can make something work. But he needs to basically go back to the drawing board, and we'll see where we're at, you know, when they come back with the next reiteration. Back literally back to the drawing board. So would somebody like to introduce a motion to deny? I would move to deny the variances sought as presented. We'll have a support. second. Oh, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Okay. All those in favor of the motion to deny signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. All right. Hopefully we'll see you again soon, sir. What was that, the 9 to 1? 8 to 1. 8 to 1. Yeah, okay. Mr. Murphy, anything else for the good of the city? Then we are looking for the mystery motion. I move to adjourn. Wait. Wait. No. Mr. Alpac? I uh, received a letter that Mr. Murphy passed along to Ms. Anderson, and I addressed to both of us, so I was just going to read it for the record. Actually, uh, Mr. Alpac, we can give that to staff, and they can put it on file, but it's okay. really poor form for if every time somebody got a letter, we write right. it into the Thank record, it's, it's, it's a little clumsy. I never received something personal, yeah, so. so that's... So perfectly Mr. Murphy will have it on file, and anybody here is welcome to read it. Okay, that's perfectly fine, then. And it, it would have been more appropriate for them to send it to the entire board anyways. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so with that being said, Mr. Motion? I move to adjourn. Support. All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.